Yo, dude. It's Damn, like Inception. We got this idiot on the podcast. Yeah, we're crossing. So. We're crossing cams. You're not supposed to cross cams. Oh, oh nice. this is vlog. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, first of all, making some tea. We're gonna do some light. Eat, Eat more ass. ass. Listen, man, our production value is not that great, okay? We, we're working on the production value. We're doing a podcast with uh, my shitty videographer, Jacob. Yo. And, uh, you know, because first and foremost, you know, I think videographers, you know, they, they don't get enough love, man. Without the videographers and the editors, none of this shit would be a fucking video. Like, they wouldn't even be a video. I, because I'm not doing that shit. No way. I can't. I'm not good at it. We gotta tell some stories about uh, our Miami trips, our Cabo trips. I had Cancun, Bahamas. Bro, it's been fucking crazy. Yeah. And because we stayed at Steve's for like 30 days. We did. We had an we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll get on the podcast, we'll do it. Very important. Don't let Bam out. Eat more yeah. ass. Eat hey, more hey, ass. Hey, very, very hey, essential. Hey, Whoa. We upgraded, dude. You don't do this shit anymore. I'm always gone. Still be dead. Fuck Christmas. No. <sighs> I have a guest here today. Um, a lot of you have no idea what so fucking ever who this person is, but um, I think uh, it's important to say that without the special people behind the cameras, Jacob's one of them, Sylvie's one of them, shout out Chris, he's not here, he's back home in Jersey. Um, without the dope people behind the camera, you guys wouldn't see the content that you see of me, you wouldn't see videos, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have the nice edits, you wouldn't have the photos, all the cool shit. Um, so I was just like, fuck it today, um, before we go to Miami, I was like, yo, I just wanna have Jacob, my videographer, Jacob Bonilla, that's his name. Um, some of you guys probably know because you watch the videos, you know that he's behind the camera, like talking shit here and there. Um, I, don't really, yeah. I don't really pop my head in there too much, but I talk shit behind the camera. Yeah, you talk shit a little bit. It's good yeah. though. It's a That's good dynamic. Cool. And I'm gonna say first and foremost before we get into this, Jacob. Jacob's out of all the video, and I've been doing this shit for. I mean, hopefully you guys know if you've been watching my shit for years, for like almost ten fucking years on the internet and shit, maybe eleven making content. Um, I know eight years shooting YouTube videos. And Jake is probably the first videographer that I've met that like kind of, we kind of get each other a little bit on the creative level. And I know that's so important. Like just for you guys out here listening, watching this, um, before we get into this, if you guys want to do something on social media, like you need to find someone who is talented or, or and someone who not only is talented, but also cares about what they're doing. Cause you have, I've, you have to have like a good dynamic. Cause like yeah. if I didn't like understand like the personality, like at first it was really hard when we first started working together because I had no idea who the, f I mean I kind of like watch your stuff. Well, now hold on. But you, it was like wait, I, hold on. I, uh, <laughs> hold on, I know I didn't know who you are. I didn't, I knew who you were, but like, it's weird because when you start working with someone you don't really know know them know them like yeah. on a personal level. Like now we we get like, you know like we fuck around we have like the same personality and like we yeah. just talk shit behind the camera you like you know we just vibe off each other. Yeah. So like understanding that like you guys can make better content that way. For sure. Um, I think it's funny too. I mean, why don't you tell the story when you first met me? I think the story is hilarious. The very, very first time ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're throwing it back like way, way, way back. So when I was a kid, I was a super fat kid. So I used to watch a lot of fitness stuff and obviously Brad being a fitness influencer, I used to watch all of his YouTube videos way back in the day. Um, and I went to his gym with a couple of friends and I remember it was like the first time I'd ever met I had never met you in my life, bro. Yeah. I walk into his gym and like, you know, when you're a fan, I'm kind of fanboying and I see Brad outside the gym. I go in there and I'm like, Hey bro. Like, cause I wanted to do YouTube when I was a kid. So I went in there. I'm like, yo dude, like can I ask you a super quick question? Like, I know that you're a YouTuber. How do you stay consistent? And like, how do you stand out? And he didn't even say anything to me. He just, <laughs> bro, I shoot I, you not, bro. You just stared straight at me. And he just was like, didn't say a word. And I was like, okay. Like I look at my friends. I'm like, I find this hard to believe. I swear to God, bro. I can't make it's this shit up. It's still so funny. I literally cannot make this shit up. And so like I go up to him. He doesn't, he doesn't answer me. So I look at my friends. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go. Did I have out. my headphones in? No, dude. Wow. You were just weird. sitting on your phone. Like how you do now. Oh, I must've been on the and phone. I think you were just in a shitty mood, bro. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. So I go to work out. I come back and I'm like walking out the door and then Brad like waves me over. Like I'm about to walk out the door and he's like, all right, you know, I think he felt bad maybe because you were being a dick to me. Yeah, I, I have think, no I, idea. But it was yeah, really no, funny. It was hilarious. There's definitely certain times when I'm like, you know, I mean, now you see it because now you're on the well, yeah, other side. Yeah, because like it. I didn't know. I think right, right. I, and like when you're a kid, you're just like, I just want to go talk to this guy. Of course, you know? of course. Now you have a different perspective because you've seen both sides of it. Yeah, because um, you'll be like working or doing something. So yeah. I know that I guarantee I know that I was because I've done this many times where like I'm doing something. I'll tell someone, yo, give me a minute or give me a second. And then I'll go get them later and I'll be like, I'll, I'll do the same thing where I'll like, I'll see them on the way out and I'll be like, yo, before you dip, like, yeah, let me like get a, a, yeah, let me talk to you real quick. Yeah. Like 
but tell, before before we keep talking about this, tell tell them what I said, what we what you talked about with me. Oh, I said, how do you like stand out? Anyway, like he grabbed me over by the by the time I was leaving, but we ended up did we ended up having a conversation, and I remember I was like, how do you stand out from like everyone else? Like, how can I do YouTube? And he was like, well, the fact that you have to ask me that question says a lot, and I remember that, and I never forgot that. Like, I remember from that moment. And I wanted to do YouTube videos. I kind of just like, I put my camera down for a solid two years and I didn't even pick it up because it hit me in my head so hard. I was like, damn, why do I actually want to make YouTube videos? And it was at the time it was, I just wanted to get famous. Yeah. And I told you that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I just want to entertain people and like, you know, get famous. And he was like, oh, well, that's not a good enough reason. And it was just like, it, it knocked me so off guard that I just didn't even know what to say. Yeah. But you, but after that, like you kind of like really talked about like, the true meaning of making content or doing things and having a purpose. And I was like, Oh shit. Even though I put down my camera for two years, I'm in a position now where I can, I can like, you know, create stuff for like yeah. bigger YouTubers, which is dope. Like yeah. the fact that we're working together is pretty dope. So yeah, it's a, it's just an interesting story. Like how it all comes for a circle. And I have, I've had this conversation just people listening. I've had this conversation with so many kids, yeah. like not just you, like this same exact thing where they're like, yo, I want to do social media. And like, uh, I'm like, why? I have had this conversations, you know, you've even been there where I've had conversations and yeah, people it's like, funny. you'll call me over. You'll be like, Hey Jacob, how many times have I got asked this question? Yeah. And even that's, it's funny cause it's the first time we met and, and here's the truth guys. It's if someone goes and if you're, if this is your mentality, it's not enough to be like, Oh, I just want to be famous or I just want to make money on the internet. And, and like, it looks cool. Like, yes, I, I understand that it looks cool. Like it looks fun. It looks, and it is, it is really fun. It's still a lot of work at times, but the thing is this, if you go into something and like your sole focus is like, I just want to be famous or I just want to make money, you're already starting off on like a really bad foot, bad foot. It's and not it, a good foot. Yeah. Because the thing that I was trying to get to you and the thing, the thing that I tell every kid who asked me the same question is like, it has to be more than just, I want to, cause someone else is doing it or because I want to be popular. Like you have to have a meaning behind why you're doing it. Yeah. Cause then it'll take you further. Like if well, you're just chasing like, you know, cosmetic things or materialistic things, it's like that only takes you so far, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's just, but it's as simple as this. Like, if you were like, the reason why I want to do this and it's something you could draw directly to yourself that it really means something to you beyond just like making money or being famous, because that's, at some point, that means absolutely nothing, right? Like, the true meaning, like, for me, is very direct. I want to be a father figure for people because I grew up without a father figure, yeah, yeah. right? And then when I started realizing, oh, shit, this is actually happening because of the type of content or the types of conversation that I would have, that's when I was like, whoa, this is, I love this. And, and I just, I'm trying to tell you guys who are starting up or who are doing this, you don't always know right away, right? And that's why I always tell people like, just start doing things you think you enjoy, things you're passionate about, things when you do, you're like, yo, I really love this. And that's the message I always try to tell anyone because if you come at something straight up and you're just like, I just want to make money. And like, again, I just want to be famous. And there's no reason why there has to be a deeper reason why like everyone wants the same thing everyone wants money everyone yeah, everyone, wants happiness everyone, yeah, everyone wants to do the same shit but it's know? like why is it important to you and i always ask the same question people will go well i want to uh, entertain people right and i'll say why and they'll be like because i like to make people laugh and i'm like why and they'll be like oh i don't i don't it's like yeah, i didn't they don't think really that know. far they don't really know so it's like <clears throat> did you pick something because you just thought oh it looks cool and i and listen there's nothing wrong with that right but to get to a certain level where like most people, I, I feel like they want to attain that level, you have, it has to really mean something. Like, like I said, for me, I could say this is exactly why. And I didn't realize it right away. And I was just kind of doing stuff that, like I said, and I'm telling you guys and encouraging you guys, I did things right away that I just enjoyed and I felt fulfilled doing. And then I, I was like, over time, people were like, oh, I like this. I like when you talk about this. I like when you, and then I saw so like, I got this like feedback, right? But it's, it's. I'm just saying, don't go into something being like, I want money. I want fame. Yeah. Cause I always got to have a reason. Yeah. Like I always like talked about it with like any of my friends or family. Like I always say like, whenever you meet someone, just be genuine, like be yourself, man. Like do your own thing, you know, because you can only, you can only fake being genuine for so long. Yeah. And like chasing like materialistic things and like just wanting to be famous. It, it just, it won't work. So just like if you, if you chase a true purpose and just be a genuine person, like I think that'll take you further. Cause then you can actually sustain that. You can't be, like fake and, and follow that for like, ever. no, there's no, no, no way, no. dude. You're not yeah. going to get to that to a level where you want to be like really good at something. I mean, it's superficial. It's like, yeah, if, it's just not if, possible. If you're, if you're basing your actions off of like something that you think people want because of you see it being successful for someone else, then it's not, your intentions aren't true and why you do it. They're exactly. just like, Oh, it works for him. It can work for me. I'll copy this format. Right. Exactly, yeah. There's like carbon copies of everyone specifically now on the internet and social media in the fitness space. It's just, it's just carbon copy after carbon copy. 
And like, it is what it is. It's okay. But the people who will truly genuinely stand out will always be the people who are like, this is who I am. And this is why I think this is why this matters to me. And this is what's important to me. And this is what makes me sad. And this is what makes me happy. And I truly believe in every industry, those are the people who are going to be truly successful, who are just more unapologetically themselves and who do it because like the thing they're doing, it actually starts to mean something to them beyond just more money, more fame. So that's the thing I've always talked so many kids about. I literally, it's the most asked question that I get in person. Yeah, no, I know, like I literally hear it every single fucking day. <laughs> every right. time we're at the gym, so someone it's, comes I just think it's asks. funny now, your initial interaction with me was like, I, it was like, it looked like I was a dick to you. Yeah. And now you're you're in a position where you see, you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, it's actually kind of weird because I don't think a lot of people can actually say that. It's kind of funny how yeah. it works. It just fast forward like five, six years. And yeah. Now, now it's working so, out, so it's dope. What, what is it like uh, working for me? Just general. <laughs> Did, did, be honest. I don't give a fuck. I just I um, want to be like, well, when I first started, um, I thought, you know, I'm just going to give it a shot. I didn't know what to really expect because I kind of already like was doing videography on the side because yeah. I worked at a gym so, and you got way better by like you were, you were good when I first saw you and I was like, his stuff's good, but you got way better. Yeah. It just comes with time, you know, yeah. practice and doing so many videos, bro. We were doing yeah. a lot of content. Holy like, fuck. I don't know. I know people probably don't really realize it, but doing four videos a week like solo is so fucking hard dude yeah because like we were traveling yeah. and like we were going to miami we we're going to cancun bahamas which we'll get to in a second um but when i first started working with you it was kind of weird it was like i didn't really know what to expect working with a youtuber yeah and i just work with like people like locally um but the, i remember the first day that we started working together we shot a video with noah back yeah. And because I wasn't used to shooting videos, <laughs> yeah. like, dude, I was not used to it at all. So I'm like filming this video and it's dope one to be with other YouTubers and other influencers that you see online. So they're having a conversation. You and Noah were having a conversation and I'll never forget this yes. shit because this was the first day I ever like really worked with you. So I had met you, but I never worked with you. So I'm filming this video <laughs> and I'm, I'm like this, no, right? So going. the camera, I, I didn't know. They're talking and I'm so invested in this conversation that they're having that I'm not moving the fucking camera. I'm literally just moving my eyes. Like, like you're focused on the yeah, conversation. Yeah, I'm like this, like moving, but I'm not moving. This is like the, the worst thing a videographer can do. And then do, Brad, by the way. Brad was like, don't do that shit. And I was like, yeah. oh, I was like, fuck, dude, yeah. this motherfucker is going to snap on me like the first like 30 minutes I know him. Like, and I I, but I explained you why, right? Yeah, because it was like, it, well, I mean, I get it too. It's kind of like teaching anything like if if someone does it once and you don't catch them in the beginning they're yeah. gonna keep doing it yeah so it was like okay well i mean i kind of went home that day and i was like fuck do i really want to work with brad like he kind of <laughs> yeah. seems like an asshole dude. yeah i love it and i was like eh, well, well we'll see where it goes and then obviously fast forward to now it's it's been pretty dope. do you think i'm an asshole sometimes yeah that's i fair, mean working man. with you is like people don't really see the inside i mean you're not like a piece of shit dude you're not an asshole but yeah. you you're like you're just you know, if I do something wrong, you're like, Hey bro, you need to do this. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know? I think it's how it should be though. Yeah. Because people you know? are like, if I, if you keep telling me and not, or like if I keep fucking up and you're not telling me what yeah. I'm doing wrong, eventually it's going to be like, shit hits, shit hits the fan yeah. and then people get I'm, resentful and then you're going to get pissed. And I've learned, I really think you're an asshole. I've learned this the hard way in the past with other people where it's like, I, I didn't speak up. And this is just like, this is just in the simple videographer thing, but this could be like for people in relationships, anything. It's like, if you don't speak up sooner than later, like that's when shit breaks. Yeah. Cause you're like, you're kind of letting it go. You're letting it, it go. early, catch it early and, and just address it. Cause obviously at the same time for me is like, I don't want to waste my time just as much as I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. I want to make sure we're able to like really succeed at this. And because I've been through so many different situations where it's like, you know, prior to Jacob, I had someone that was like, you know, I, I thought was the guy and I spent a ton of time, invested a ton of time and like, you know, teaching the person how it should be or what's right or what's wrong. And then it was, it was too much for them. Right. And it's, and I didn't get it. This stuff is not for everyone. Yeah. Cause it's a fucking grind, man. Like when we started doing those, those, um, Miami trips, like it was insane. And I was actually talking to Sylvie about this. I was like, I was, I was telling him, I was like, you were filming and editing four videos a week. Yeah. It, that's fucking absurd. The amount of like, and because here's the difference back in the day, years ago, if you guys saw my videos, I had people who filmed for me and they just really didn't put much effort into the editing. And, and, and I, I, you know, Kevin, he knew that I talked to him about it and he did a certain amount and he's like, Hey, this is the most I can do just because of the time Nadim. it was like, it was also kind of the style I at remember, the time. I remember. Yeah. At the time, like I remember watching your OG videos and like, it was basically just point and shoot and then just upload that shit to YouTube. Yeah. It no, seemed like no straight up bro. And, yeah. I, and it's crazy because part of me is like, fuck man, I, I wish cause like, 
the kind of editing you first came with, not first, but like I would say maybe five months in, you kind of hit a good editing stride. It was like, damn, if I had that five years ago, my channel would have been way bigger because it was way more YouTube content, yeah. like edits and like funny and like the, the, the creative behind just like clipping clips together. So it was like, I knew I was not trying to keep going down that road because I had gone down that road so many times. That's why I was so quick to be like, yo, yeah. do, you know, Tell check it. Do, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, you were doing so much work and I was talking to Silby. I was like, I did that shit on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. No way. Yeah. Cause I wanted to see what you were capable of. Even when it was oh, hard man, as fuck. That's fucked up, man. It, it is. It is. I want to see what you're capable of, even if it was like way too much work. And I wanted to see how you would react when it was way too much work. Yeah, it was pretty nice. It's a little fucked up. Yeah, it was kind of fucked up. But I needed to know that because then it's like, because like, if you can know where someone is, this is, this is some business tip. I'm not saying you got to treat people like shit. I was not treating them like shit, but it was like so much work where he probably needed a day off here or there. And we just kept going. I just kept going. So it was like, I, like, I remember there was a point where like I was like working so much that I was, it was, Okay, imagine because we'd shoot every day. Because I'm gonna go back to like like on me like as a regular person like you you've never done any YouTube you've never done shit. This is relating to a lot of people because people just work like normal jobs and like a nine to five, which is totally fine. And I was working at a gym, right? So I was yeah. working at a gym, just working front desk. So from going from working there like four to five days a week, you know, like six to eight hour shifts, going to like seven days a week, no days off. Like I was working around the clock. <laughs> Imagine you like it, we were uploading Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. So it was constantly filming, editing, filming, and editing, and like twice, not, twice on Wednesdays. Yeah, dude. So I wasn't Monday, Wednesday, Friday, twice on Wednesday. Because I remember when Tuesdays would come around, I'd be like, "Holy shit, I want to die!" Because it was like so much work, dude. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I, it's a little fucked up, but I, like I said, I did it on purpose because it was important for me to know how you would react when it was like so much work. Like if you would still give it the right amount of care that I, at least I was looking for, and you still did. Cause like it's important to know what someone can do. Shout out Adderall, which is fucking crazy, by the way. Like, when did you get on that? Well, it was like when it started to get really hard when we started going to Miami. Yeah, because we hadn't had traveled at that time. We were just kind of like doing like shit here locally, and I was like, oh, okay, this is fine. Three videos a week, and then you upped it to four. I was like, okay, this is kind of a lot, and you're like, all right, dude, we're going to Miami. And I remember like you told me when we, we were went going to live to, with Steve. Yeah, when we live with Steve. Yeah. We were at Steve's house for a solid like four weeks, bro. Yeah. I think what it what felt four weeks felt like fucking six months. Yeah, because this was at the time. It was at the time um, that where we were going and we were doing the the trips, the gambling trips. <laughs> yeah, so imagine with Steve and Steve. This is like Steve's also like massive come up. Like outside it, yeah. of his initial come up, his massive come up because he's making all this extra money. He's able to like give do all these crazy giveaways and give away all this crazy shit to people. So his videos were getting crazy. Like literally day by day, he was doing the craziest shit. So we were filming content. We were working out. We're working out with Steve. We're, we're going to film like uh, these trips. And uh, it was just fucking insane, man. Like it was insane. Because I remember like we had been making videos, but we had never traveled. So imagine like you had two three days notice where your boss is like hey bro we're going to miami for 30 days pack your shit yeah i was like sick dude let's do it so i packed my bag and we flew straight to miami and like when we first got there i didn't i didn't know steve i didn't know his team i didn't know like yeah. you know steiny i'm yeah. sure you guys know who steiny is he's been on here before but like Going from that to like Miami, I'd never even traveled in my life. And so you guys know his perspective. We were going, we, we were in Miami staying at his spot for like a month, month and a week or something. And then we would travel every weekend to Cabo or Cancun because that's where we were actually able to do the gambling. Yeah. So um, when we went to Miami, like we kind of like chilled. And like you said, like we, we would go like, I think the first trip we ever did was to Cancun. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And so it was kind of crazy because you don't really realize it in the moment, but now that I look back at it, like we were blowing money, bro. Yeah. Like uh, I was blowing money. Yeah. Brad was blowing money. Steve was blowing money. I but, wasn't blowing money. Cause you know, I'm fucking, but Steve was time. making, so I was, I was making decent money too. I was making good money too. Yeah. From that yeah. Stuff. And I like that Cancun trip or was it Cabo? Yeah. Oh, it, it was, I mean, it was every time. It was yeah. Cancun so or Cabo. I remember the first time we went, but like we got like this huge fucking Waldorf mansion. Oh yeah. I spent, I spent, what was that? You remember, you remember? She wasn't working. Natalie she wasn't, wasn't working. working with okay, us yet. fuck. So, and just so you guys know, I want you guys to understand this. I pay for half of this shit. Okay, I know everyone likes to joke about Steve, and I don't pay for shit. I literally got invoices from Steve's fucking mother. Here's the price. Here's half of the fucking suite. Where I'm not. I'm going over there. I'm not making as much as Steve. It's fine. I don't care. It's just fun overall. 
But like, it was good for the content. It was amazing. It was amazing. But it, I just remember the jokes were so funny and people like, I don't know if people actually think I'm a cheap motherfucker. Um, but like, I was legit spending half these bills. Like, I think that Waldorf Astoria, the first time we went, that shit was like $4,000 for how, how many nights were we there? I don't know. But two remember, nights, three and nights. And we took a fucking private jet there. Yeah. And I paid for that private no. jet. Okay. The first private jet I didn't pay for. I would oh, okay. say that. first private jet I didn't pay for, but that was the dopest private jet I've been on. And I yeah, think like I've been never, on. I'd never been on a private jet in my entire life. That was cool. And I remember we flew there, that and like was... there was like snacks and shit on the on the on the fucking jet, dude. I was like, holy hell, this that was is fun. Dope. We didn't even have to go through like any security. Like I've never been through, not having to go through like all that, yeah, that security check, like a commercial it's, thing. We definitely done a lot of shit. Like a lot of shit you. You probably wouldn't have done and in the same time frame. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly because like we really did. Steve was like you said, Steve was already big, but when we started doing the gambling thing, it was like a huge step up. Yeah. Of, well, like, it was content. just the amount of money that he was able to make that it's like it allowed him to do extreme fucking content, like extreme giveaway shit. Yeah, and like uh, like the dude was fucking blowing money. He was, he was giving printing. away so much money. Yeah, it, it was, was insane. Dope. It was dope. And I remember the second time we went, um, we came back to Miami. So like like I said, we would go to to like these gambling trips on the weekend and then we come back Miami would be basically home base and then we kind of like chill throughout the week and like work out and work stuff out, yeah. and then on the second time I think we went it was Cabo or Cancun this time but that's when Steve made that video where we got we got on this private jet guys like I thought the private jet's already alone like 13 14 thousand dollars yeah we get on this way. we get on there and there's like a bunch of girls with us we have alcohol oh my god and it was God. so okay. sick and so like I'm just chilling there there's hot bitches everywhere my pussy ass I'm just sitting in the corner and then yeah and then he starts buying them jewelry yeah and that was insane I was like bro you just spent like 14k like which is literally a car yeah one way on the airplane and then started buying them jewelry. I was like, like Holy ten, shit. fifteen thousand dollar, eight thousand dollar. He bracelet. bought you something. He too. bought me a fourteen thousand dollar bracelet. And that was insane. Yeah, he he's. I mean, he's a madman. Like Steve, the amount of money that he made and gave away is insane. Like this dude was literally making as much money as he was like giving away. Yeah, it was it was gnarly. And I think we both met six nine too. Was yeah, that the first time you ever met, you ever met Danny. Was it was that the one? Oh, that was that when the girls came. Was it that time? I don't know if this was when the Dude, girls we've came. We've done so much shit, I don't even remember. Yeah, but one of the trips Danny had came had in Mexico. come on. And it was either, yeah, I think it was in Mexico or Cancun. I don't know, I'm sure. Cancun yeah, is in Mexico. Know. It's a, We always went to Mexico. What were your first impressions of him? Danny? Yeah. I mean, he's just a he, normal dude. Yeah, he's just like. He's just, you know, dark humor like us, dirty like, humor. Because like, I feel like a lot of people don't really get to like talk about Danny like that, like on a personal level. He seems like. Super cool dude. Yeah, I mean, obviously the guy's been through a bunch of shit. He's, yeah, you know, um, I don't, I don't know details about all the shit he's done or all the shit he's been through, but I mean, he's like a fucking decent, nice, he nice dude for sure. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't shitty. What about you? What do you think? Well, I mean, six nine, bro. I mean, he's cool as hell. I mean, because we, we've kicked it with him the, and like, was well, the first time we were at his house, right, working out. That's the first time. That was the first time we, yeah, we met him at his house. His house is big as fuck. And then we, he also came with us to like Bahamas and Cancun. Or Cabo or some shit. But I'll never forget when we were walking from a bar. Do you remember this? What? We were at a bar with Danny. Finish the story. Okay, so we walk into a bar with Danny, and no one had noticed that, like, it was Steve and Danny, like, and also you. All of us combined was, like, it's such, there's a lot of attention yeah. towards us. So we get off of, like, this, like, van that we were in. It was because they don't really have Ubers in Mexico. This was Cabo. Yeah. I remember this. And time. so we get off of this, like, Uber van thing. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah, and so we get into this bar. No one really notices that it's that it's Danny and it's you and Steve. So like, no one. We didn't really have that much attention. We had a few people come up to us to like take pictures and stuff. But we get into this bar, and as soon as like word got that we were there, yeah, there was so many people. I've never seen so many people or been like bombarded by people. I think they love him in Mexico. Yeah, they yeah. love him, dude. And yeah, like, we, we got we, out that bar. Do you remember? Like, there was, we just got like. Yeah. There was a ton of people. I've never yeah, seen it was so like many fucking people. fucking Disneyland, like people surrounding like a Disneyland parade yeah. at Disneyland. And I remember we were walking back from the bar to get into the van and they just like swarmed the van. Like it was like fucking Justin Bieber. And you couldn't even shit. drive. Like they were just literally, if you can think of, I don't know if you, like just like a ton of people just crowding around this van where you couldn't even drive. Like if you went forward, like you're running someone over. Yeah. Like six people over. Seven yeah. It's got to be like probably like one of the most insane things that I've ever yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was so. Is there anything else crazy there, or anything? I wonder if there's anything I don't know about that, like you, that was crazy. Um. Well, like I said, you gave me like a three days notice to go to Miami. Yeah. So it was kind of weird. 
um, and I didn't know Steve. I didn't know Steiny. I didn't even know you that well. Yeah. I mean, we had like a pretty good like bond, but I didn't really know you that well. So um, going from you know just working at a gym to going to Miami and like working seven days a week and then creating all that content. It was like me not sleeping combined with not knowing anybody and being in a city that I've never been to in my life. Yeah. It was like we would film during the day, but at nighttime it was really hard because like you guys would like go do your own thing and I'd be just fucking editing away. Yeah. But like, dude, I was like going through it for a second. It like was what? so what hard. Do you mean? What? Because like I had to like take Adderall not sleeping and I wasn't working out. It was just fucking hard for me to like get used to fucking get warrior, yeah, bro. to get used to that amount of like work was really 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 tough but i just like i thugged out do you think do you think uh it made you better yeah for sure i think testing yourself you know putting yourself in like those positions where you're working really hard and you don't think you can keep going yeah but you continue to do it then the next time you get to that position it'll be way easier and you can even push yourself even past that way yeah or even when it's not that exact high high level of work like then if it's less work, like now it's not as much. Yeah. We're not traveling as much. It's not as much videos. It's way easier now, dude. And that's what I'm saying. It's so it's like, so it made everything else. Everything that I do now is like easy as fuck. Yeah. It's super easy. And that's my point. That's the point I was trying to make earlier, which again, like it's not for everyone. Like some people break from this shit and some people just can't sustain it. Can't do it. It's not for them. And that's fine. But I wanted to know, I was like, is this, can this guy really do it? And then and now it's like, you know, it's like, it's cool to hear. It's cool to see like the learning curve. It's like, you fucking did it at the highest level, like pulling your fucking hair out. And now it's like chill. And it's now it's fucking easy, which is like, then you can be better at actually yeah. like you could be better at making all the content Yeah, and you could, you could be more creative and all that shit. So I just think, I don't know. It's, I think it's important to like, even for myself, not just obviously people that work for me or work with me or whatever. I, I remember early on in my career, just anything. I remember just not, I mean, I still kind of know life, everything and just nonstop work, but um, I just always been, I've always had that kind of mentality, which is like, I just love this shit. I love, I love what I do. I love working. I love trying to challenge myself. I love trying to get better. No, I know you love working, bro. We work seven days a fucking week right now. <laughs> yeah. Natalie, yeah. Natalie's then, shaking her head. And then he complains about people are stupid that work over the weekends. Makes no sense. Why would you work? Why would you not work? Guys, on the Bradley made me work on Christmas day. No, no, no. You were only no, there for like two me, hours. You made me work. You only there for, but did I make you work Christmas Eve? No, no. See, it's fine. And I only had you come in for like two hours. Christmas. Yeah, day. you're right. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, I, I love it. I love I, my favorite thing in the world. Like it, one day of the year working out is Christmas day. That's why I did it because I knew that you why, never wait, wait, pause. Why is that your favorite day to work out? You told me. Uh, that. Yeah. I mean, I don't really fuck. Okay. Is I'll just, just some you. bullshit, dude. No, I just oh. don't want to get emotional. I'll tell you why. The oh, reason shit. is because like for me, um, you know, I lost my father when I was young. You know this. The people watch this podcast. Hopefully you've heard the story. Um, and, you know, for many, many years growing up, obviously I didn't have a dad, you know, at Christmas. Yeah. And uh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I hate telling the truth sometimes. Um, but, but it's necessary. So I, I would like doing that made me, I don't know, it. Allowing me to be in the, just, just, you know, me in general, man, like the gym for me is my place of fucking is my place of worship. It's a place that like makes me feel good. If like, I could tell you straight up and I know you've seen this. If I'm not consistently training, I just like, I lose my fucking mind. Like I'm just not motivated. I'm not happy. And the, the, the gym for me on that day specifically, I remember when I was younger, I was able to go in very early before like they would close. Like, I think the 24 back in my hometown, like closed at like maybe noon on Christmas or something like that, or 11. And just having that, the, uh, that community, you know, is other guys that I worked out with, even on that day always meant so much to me. Cause for me, it's like, it's, it's, it's a father figure thing. It's like not having those people in my life and wanting those people on specific days and occasions. You know, it was like when I was, when I was graduating from high school, I remember being like, damn, like seeing kids and their dad being like, what the fuck? Like, I don't have this shit. And they, that days like that or big days when it's like, you know, prom and stuff like that. I would think about my dad a lot Christmas and, and obviously his birthday, but those were the big days throughout the week, excuse me, throughout the year that it, like it would be more, it'd be way more present in my life. Yeah, well, it just like affects you a lot. More. Yeah. But so mentally, like mentally, like it's just like, you think about that. Exactly. Yeah. So Christmas was a time that like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. And I always made that the first thing I did in the morning. Cause Obviously, I didn't have a father to celebrate it with. Obviously, I have my mom, and she's amazing, and she's, you know, a, you know, incredible person. I'm not taking anything away from her, but it was just different. I just didn't have that fatherly figure, so the gym always became, like, my community for that. 
So for me now, fast forward, it's like I have my own gym with my own fucking key. I was like, why would I not train in the morning? It's my absolute favorite time of the year to train. And then I also know most gyms are closed on Christmas. And I also know a lot of other people. I don't know if they're directly feeling the same exact thing that I'm feeling or have the same issues. Obviously not. We all have different things. But I think, I don't know, it's just such a special day to train. Like also for people, whether it's a problem or not in their life, like people just like to work out before they eat a bunch of shitty food, just like, you know, Thanksgiving and stuff. Thanksgiving, yeah. And I just know it's like, for me, it's like, why would I not have this day? And if it's a day that I can, like, I got social media shit, I could say everyone come for free and let it be. Cause like every day on Christmas now for, I think since the gym's been open, except maybe the first year, um, I don't know why we didn't do I'm, I Actually, I think we did do it on the first year. Every day since the gym's been open, it's been free. So anyone could come on Christmas and work out for free. So again, it's just a personal thing. It was just for me, it, it was a place of community. The gym was that place for me. Yeah. So, so like, do you think that like, I don't know if this is like too personal to ask you, but like, do you think that when like super traumatic things like losing a father, or let's just say like something really bad happens in your life, do you think that teaches you like the biggest lessons in life? Like what have you like learned from that? Yeah, man. I mean, it's like to answer that question, the answer is yes, 100%, right? Think about everything in your life. Think about the biggest moments in your life. Think about the smallest moments in your life, right? What do you remember and what do you notice the most? It's not always the biggest thing, right? It's the thing that you feel the most. Like the right? emotion, that emotional Exactly. It's all it. about the emotional. So things that are very trying on your heart, whether it be like a relationship, losing a girlfriend, like, you know, not being able to, you know, make something work out with a woman or whatever your sexual preferences. I don't know. But my point is like an intimate relationship. If you can't make it work out and let's say you spent years trying to make it work out those moments, right? Losing, you losing a family member, losing, like losing someone like, you know, massively failing at something, let's say like in your career that you're super passionate about and you super love. And it's like, you fail and you fail. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, other moments don't count, but those are the moments in your life that truly shape you. Like think of all the moments you've had that were not moments like that. It's like, you don't even fucking remember. You, remember you can't things, even yeah. be like, Oh, that you're like that day. Every time anyone recollects something, they're like, oh, it was a big, it was something that affected their, their heart. Yeah. It was an emotional it's thing. It's always like the biggest things that affect you. Like it's usually like the negative things too. And I always like try to tell myself whenever there's like a negative thing that happens to me or something really tragic happens in my life, I always try to keep it in the back of my head. I'm like, just know that you're probably, and you will learn some of the biggest lessons in your life. Yeah. And like, you'll take bro. it, you'll take like a lot away from that rather than if you're always winning, like I, well, that's I, it. I don't always want to win, bro. Like I want to fail. You like, have to, <laughs> if I didn't but, like, if you didn't fail, you would never like learn anything new. Yeah, no. I mean, some people naturally can like learn without failing. Right. But yeah. everyone, you get to a point where it's like, it's the, it's truly, it's just this, right. It's grit. It's like learning. Okay. This shit didn't work out. And then you, you, you learn like, okay, do I, am I, do I have enough grit that like this really matters to me enough that despite how bad it felt failing at this, I still wanted enough to keep going. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference with everything. It's like if you learn and you realize through an experience that, oh, man, I love this so much, but this beat me down. This fucked me up. This made me feel like this. And you keep going. That means you really want it. And I guarantee you, you're going to get it. But if you go, this shit beat me down. This made me feel like shit. Fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. It hurt me too much. You don't really want that. No, I, well, I mean, some people well, some are people, that. Yeah. Some people, they, they avoid that. They avoid that feeling. And that's okay. because Maybe they're not ready to attack that feeling that way. But... I promise you guys this, if the things that are like, you know, I mean, I'm a great example of it, man. Like the thing that could have changed my life drastically in a different direction, which at times was affecting me very negatively and has affected me very negatively. And still, I have moments in my life in and out of it, but like the feeling of depression, if am I good enough? And, and I relate it all to that, but there's so many more things now because I've, I've allowed that to make me better instead of make me worse. And yeah. that's the real, the real thing here where it's like, Cause you let that, you let all that, like that negativity and all that, like sorrow kind of just feel, which fuel what you do now. Yeah. You know, like you, you make these YouTube videos because you have a, a deeper purpose and like you do all these like positive things because you, you felt that negativity in your life. Yeah. You know, that's something really tragic happening, which yeah. is dope. I mean, it's, it's fucked. But it's like, it's a good and a bad thing at the same time. No, I think it's awesome, man. Like my mom, I, I've had these conversations with my mom where she was like, you know, if it could be different, like, would you have it? And I like, absolutely not. I wouldn't yeah. change anything about my childhood. I wouldn't change any of the moments I went through. Cause then 
I would have less of a story to tell. I had a left to give to people like right now talking. I wouldn't be able to say any of this shit yeah. if I didn't go through that negative shit where I was like thinking about killing myself, thinking about depression all the time, thinking about why, like, why are we alive? What's the point of life? Why did my dad die? What did he not love me? Am I not good enough? All these thoughts that I had growing up that it's like, if I didn't go through that and I didn't, and obviously like people go through that and they don't make it out to the other side. But if I didn't make it out, I wouldn't even be here to say any of this. I wouldn't have anything to fucking share. There'd be no substance. There'd be no real value. It'd just be that's me. That's why you just got to keep going. That's the key. That <laughs> is the key, right? Just... Because the other way is, the other choice is you let it destroy you and put you down a darker path. And then you start to say, well, this is happening to me because that happened to me. And that's, that's, I would say in a lot of cases, the more common reaction is like people will undermine themselves because of their past experiences and just be like, well, I went through this. So like my life's like this now. And it's like. That's true, but you do have the power to start moving forward differently. Yeah, and people forget that. And like, I truly like believe too, like as far as like the path that you decide to go down in life, I think it really boils down to like, if you have to like manifest things, I think like writing things down and like creating like a plan to get where you want to be. Because like when I first, before I started working here, I remember I was like super depressed, lost. And I would like, I was like, what do I actually truly want? Yeah. And like, I would write it down and like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like I would just like journal, right? And you didn't know down. how you were going to get there. No. And like, I would yeah. just manifest it. So like I would write down like, Hey, like I, I want to get like, I want to, I want to build a videography, cl like some clients for videography. Like I want to quit the job that I'm currently working. I want to make this amount of money and I want to, this is where I want to be in the next like five years. And to look back from the beginning of the year to now, because we're, it's literally December now. And I, so we started working together in yeah. I think February, March. It's been what a year. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, like 10 months. Yeah. yeah. Almost a year. Almost a year. Already. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. It feels like it's been like three years. Yeah, dude. YouTube is like dog years. Yeah, it it's is. It's insane. It's dope. But like I said, but um, writing things down and like manifesting them, like I look back at all the things that I wrote down and I accomplished all of those things. Yeah. Here's the deal. Shout out Natalie, by the way. She gave me a Christmas gift and I, it's, it, you're exactly right about this. Like one of the Christmas gifts she gave me besides a blender uh, for, for juicing, which I... I I'm probably never going to use. I'm going to have to make her do it for me. I didn't know she knew that yet, but, and she's also going to have to clean it. I'm sorry, Natalie. Damn, I dude. love you. Um, <laughs> you just gave yourself more work. That's fine. Um, That's fine. And she gave me a, a journal with like some cool stuff in it, but you are absolutely right. And I, after this podcast, I'm actually going to go write down some stuff, but I want to tell you guys a story. Everyone listening. I, my mom sent me some shit and I, and this is, this is very early on in my life. I was like, I don't know, 11 years old or eight years and old. How long ago was that? Dude, I'm fucking, <laughs> fucking 80 years ago. No, I'm 32. So this is when I was like eight or I don't know if I was like six or five or so. I was like a baby, dude. Like she sent me a text message with the, all these pictures of a journal. Like she just bought me a journal and I could, I, I, I should find these. I'll have my mom text and maybe we'll pop them up on the screen. And, uh, my, not my mom. We'll have Natalie pop up on the screen. My mom sent me these, right? And, uh, I'm reading these bitches and I swear to God. Listen to this exactly. These bitches. Exactly what you said. This this blew my mind though, dude. She sent this shit to me. I swear to God, this fucking thing said, I am gonna like. I was talking about making money and have a house with a pool and have two pit bulls and all this shit. Like, and I was even to like it's a house. It's weird, dude. Because like, I don't think people realize the power of writing things down. Like, it, it, yes, and, and manifesting. It's yeah, about manifesting. manifesting. It's yeah. but writing it down and believing it and wanting it to be true. I think it's the first step is just writing it down. Yes, and I'll get more into manifestation talking to set guys and what I've done to practice that. And I'll talk to you about it too. But um, I'm telling you, when my mom sent this to me, I was like. Holy fuck. I wrote this down as like a fucking six year old. And you have all and I had <laughs> and I had oh with like almost exactly, right? Like the, the house with the pool and the two pit bulls. I swear to God, it says two fucking pit bulls. Bro, I didn't get dogs till I was fucking 24, 25. Yeah, that's like 20 how plus years later. How the fuck 20 plus years later, how the fuck I had exactly not at not 20 plus years later. Now I have everything that I every single thing that I ever wrote down, right? It, it is a real fucking thing. I'm not kidding. I swear to God, I got to show this to you. Like it is, it blew my I know, mind. I believe it too, man. Cause it, like, but it's like, how did I know that I wanted two pit bulls? Like two pit bulls? Well, that's the thing. I think I also, literally have also two too, pit bulls. You know how people always say you got to be careful what you wish for. Yes. It, that's yes. a true thing, dude. Cause I, if yeah. you say things out loud, you're like, let's just say, oh, I, I hate my life or I'm, yeah. I'm negative all the time. Or like, I don't want to do these things. Yeah, I'm I, don't tired. Like, I don't like my job. I'm tired. Yep. I'm, I'm lazy. Then 
it, I don't think people realize the power of actually saying things out loud. Like you're manifesting your reality. It's a fact. Like you're I, saying things that what you say out loud is what is going to come back to you. If you continue to say it out loud, it's like your mind already knows. Like it's one step ahead. No, it's I, so weird. It dude. sounds crazy. It sounds like, like fucking alien. Like on shit. some like, like voodoo shit. Hippie, people are no, going to be like some hippie shit. And people are like, you're fucking dumb. I swear to God, this is the most real, like same thing. The music you listen to do the, the information you continually feed yourself because what's happening in your mind is like, if you're consciously being like, man, I suck at this or man, I, I have anxiety. I get anxiety all the time. Like I used to get anxiety all the time. The less I started to tell myself, like I'm anxious, you the don't get it. I don't get it as much. Yeah, the less so I started weird. to be like, yo, I have this, I have that. I ha and I was happy. And the, the more I was speaking to myself, like consciously, because here's the deal. Everything you do consciously and say, right. It's, it's, it's not just, you know, things aren't just happening where you're like, there's a, there's a hot girl right here with no clothes on. It's not just appearing, right? That's not how it works, guys. But you should have wake up every day. Hot bitches, hot bitches, hot bitches. Yeah. Yeah. You need that. You need that. We will talk about that in a bit too. Um, but it's like, it, it is so, it becomes so tangible, man. It becomes so real. And you're like everything that's ever happened in my life. And like when I was at my worst moments, I noticed the, my, my, my language to myself, like fuck conversation with anyone. Like my, my inner dialogue with myself where I'm like, man, I don't know if this is good. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can. It's like, then like it started to affect my life exactly how I was speaking it. Yeah. It's, it's really and the strange minute, how it works. And you know what the, the fucking weird, I don't know if I ever told this story, but. Uh, it was like a mushroom story. And did I ever tell this shit? It was the, the very first time I ever took mushrooms. Have I ever tell you this? Have I ever I told this on the podcast? No, I don't think so. Okay, so this... Yeah, this drugs. This is a... Yeah, so listen. This is when I realized this so definitively. And you guys are gonna be like, oh, whatever, you're on mushrooms. But the cool thing about mushrooms is like the mushrooms don't make you do... They don't make your brain like perform functions that it was never able to perform. They like unlock your brain in a sense of like your perspective and your perception of things existing in your life and happening in your mind and hearing through your ears and like textile like a real hippie right now no i'm just telling you the truth man this is a fact <laughs> so it's like it's all you you your perception like things will feel different or sound different or like they'll 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 hit you differently right but it's all happening to you this is all relevant to you regardless of the mushrooms you're just like open to it you're aware of it right so anyways with that being said listen to the story i'm with my boy brandon shout out brandon um and we're it's the first time I took like 3.5 grams and a lot? it's a lot. It's like, get you fucked up. Mushrooms. The only time I've ever done mushrooms was like that chocolate shit. That's a microdose. That's nothing. This is oh. the kind of shit that, that like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not, mind. you're not doing stuff. You're like, you're maybe walking around like Brandon to me was like my safe net, you know? Cause he, he you're was supposed like, to do it, yeah, cause I know that you're supposed to do it with someone that you're comfortable with. Yeah. Brandon you was my guy. Like, yeah, if you no. do it alone in your room, you're like going to fucking. Yeah. So listen, ahead. so listen, cause yeah, Brandon was my guy. And so we go to, I just, I'll talk the story here. So we took the mushrooms, we're chilling, but we go to islands. It's like a burger spot, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there and um, the mushrooms are really hitting me now. I'm like, whoa, I like perceptions all off. And it's the first time I've ever experienced this. I'm like, what the fuck? It felt like the room was closing, all this crazy <laughs> shit. And the guy comes up to me to, oh, he's like, what do you want? And I was looking at Brandon like, I can't speak to this guy. You got to order for me, right? I was such in a deep, <laughs> like, that no. server was probably, like, hey, can I take your order? He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. No, I was Didn't like, he, I was like this. speaking to him. No, I was like this. I was like, I was like this. I was on a table. Like, I felt like, what the fuck? I felt like I was like, you to, like whisper to your friend. Yeah. I said, can you order for me? I said, right now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, can you order? Cause I can't do this oh, shit right now. I, Cause I was like, I literally like, I can't do this. My brain was like, this is, cr I can't deal with this. I can't deal with another person right now. So that's, I was, it's a lot of mushrooms. Anyways, listen, he orders for me. And, and then at some point the food's not even there. I'm like, I got to go outside. I'm getting fucking anxious, right? Super anxious. And I, I go outside and he, he ends up coming out like maybe five minutes later, 10 minutes later. Maybe he got his food and ate it. He's like, Brad's probably good. He just needs to go sit outside. And um, I'm like sitting, I'm like, dude, I just feel really fucking anxious. This is like, I, don't, I hate this. Like I'm, and I, and as I was saying these things, I just felt it more and more oh, and more. Oh, dude, that sucks. You more. get stuck in a fucking hole. You're yeah. like, please make it stop. And so he goes, I swear to God, he goes, no, you'll be good. Watch. Um, we'll go get drinks at this. Like, it was like a little like quickie mart thing right across the street. So we go across the street. I swear to God, like fucking like the difference of like fucking daylight and dark time. <laughs> this is how clear this line was like fucking just put like black and white just a, that straight ass line the second he goes no dude you're good trust me drink this and i i crack it open it's like and i drink it and i'm like and i 
and I hear those words and I'm like drinking it. I'm like, yeah, this is good. And the second <laughs> I said, good, dude. no, the second I said good and I was like, damn, this is good. And I like thought like, oh, I feel good. It was like, imagine like the light just turned back on. It was like a switch. Like a fucking switch where I was like, holy fuck. And then I realized that in that same moment, I was like, wait a minute. If I say the word good, I start to feel, feel better. Good. If I feel, if, if I and, say bad or and anxious, I did it shitty. And I said the same, I said at the same time, if I start to say bad, I'm going to feel bad. And you I instantly it. started to feel bad. And I was like, holy fuck, this Man. is, this is crazy. So Brandon is Jesus Christ himself or <laughs> you're telling yourself. Yo, I'm a psychopath. I don't know, man. But no, it was, it was that, it was, the line was that drastic where it was genuinely like that, where the minute I said good, I started to feel good. And like, it's almost like my world brightened up and like my heart opened up and like, That's so wild. And it, it was exact. it was that, it was that apparent right, dude, Where's the mushrooms? No, we can't Natalie, do that now. We can't, no, we can't do that now. But I'm telling you, man, like, and so from that trip years ago, I remember thinking like, when I started researching about mushrooms, I was like, wow, if my, my words are that powerful then I need to be aware of that whether or not I'm on mushrooms and I need to be aware of the words that I'm telling myself in my own head, the conversations that I have with people. I need to be more aware of those things. Cause like it's affecting me. You know like, what's pretty I wild feel too, it. Is that like people don't realize that they're in a negative mindset too. Yeah, like no. you can like go every single day. You can go an entire year, maybe two years of just being in such a shitty mindset all the time, like waking up in a bad mood until like you decide that you're like, I'm going to have a good day today. Like you ever had a shitty day. You've ever had a shitty day and you're just like, Oh my God, dude, this sucks ass. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to work out or whatever the hell you decide to do, whatever your routine is. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to have a good day today. And after that, you have a great day. Yeah. Well, it's the same it's like, thing. What it's, the fuck, dude? it's like, you know, have you ever, have you ever been driving and you're like, you're like fucking, you're mad. You're mad. You're having a bad no day. no reason. And then like, you kind of road rage a little bit. And then like someone cuts you off and you're like, fucking bitch. And you're like, you're like, fuck you. And then next thing you know, you're driving and then like you turn and like you cut too early and you like hit your tire and you fuck your rim yeah, up and or you're some like, shit. And it's like, your day just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> I swear to God, this is real. This is a real thing. It's all, it's, it's so hard to sometimes for people to just go like, all right, hold on a second. Just take a step back. Take a breather. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm That's day, what's man. important. Wake up every day. Like I, I would practice these things. Like I said, like when I got this job and the reason I, I really do honestly give all the, like the credit to manifesting, like why I got this job yeah. it was because I wrote it down every day yeah. and like I believed it, but like listing things that you're grateful for is like the first start. That was like the first start to my day. Yeah. I would always list like three things I'm grateful so for. So what, what practices, and I'll talk about this too, what practices do you have for manifestation? And like, what do you do to, to make it real? On some hippie shit, bro. But this sounds weird, but on some hippie shit, like I would literally put on like music. Yeah. Like manifesting meditation yeah, that music. That didn't sound weird at all, by the way. I put but on I, music. Never I don't know. Weird. I know, but it was like meditation music. So I'd like sit down and like put those headphones on and okay. it would be at a certain time of day. So it'd always be really late at night. Like I would stay up until like two in the morning and then it'd be just like, I, cause I couldn't sleep. So I put on like headphones, put on some meditation music, like a fucking weirdo, if that's weird. And then I'd write down things that I would just wanted to accomplish every single day. Just so every day look like big things, small things like during the day, like well, that it day. Would just, it would just be like at the end of the day, every single day, right before bed, I would write down an entire like page, just one full page every single day. Of you know, like, things that you want to do tomorrow, things that you want to do in five years or what? What was it like? It was like what I, what I was feeling at that time, what I wanted to accomplish. And like, and I would also say like affirmations, like I'm positive or like yeah. I'm a genuine person. Or Did I'm you ever wealthy. go back and read those things? Yeah. I would do it all the time. Yeah. I haven't been practicing it, it lately, which is like, I've been kind of more in a negative mindset actually, which is kind of gnarly. It's ironic. And I, and like, I didn't know why I was like in, a, in such a bad mood all the time until like I realized it. That I actually just realized this like the other night. Yeah. So I started doing it again. And yeah. now I'm like this same time last year was when I kind of started doing it. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's crazy how she gave me that gift. And I've been thinking about this for a while. And like, I'm just, I'm just such a, like, I'm just going to keep working type person that like, I do forget the little things that it's add so up. well add up, bro. It's also like, dude, before I started all this shit, that's what I did. Like before I was doing everything and it's like all the shit people see of me doing, doing, doing. Before I had anything, I would write everything down and be like, I, I want to achieve this. This is what I want to get. This is how I want to feel. This is where I want to be. And I used to do all that. And I used to take inventory of that and like look at it. And I just stopped when I got caught up with everything else I was doing. You already had it all. Now well, you have all the things that you asked for and you kind of get caught up in that. A little bit. A yeah, little like, bit. Like and you said, take a step back. So for me, it's like now, yeah, now it's taking a step back and, and trying to identify now more, more of the things that I want than just like just more of what I already have, you know, so different going, things. Kind of going off topic. Well, kind of, 
What? Like going to drugs? Yeah, go go for it. What's the care. craziest drug you've ever done in your entire life? Because mm. <laughs> I'm sure people want to hear that. I don't think you've ever talked about. Can we even talk about that? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Um, how the craziest drug or all of the drugs you've ever taken? I mean, I, <laughs> I haven't talk, done. Can we talk I've done, about I've that? I've done. Ever, I mean, I've done Molly. I've I've done cocaine once. I didn't enjoy that. Molly was crazy. I took two different forms of Molly. One time, I took pure MDMA, which is amazing. And I fucked my girl at the time. That was incredible. I heard you're not supposed to do that. Well, I did it, man. I'm fucking playing fire. Because I've heard fire. stories where if you take Molly, it's and never have, the same. You have sex, and it's the best sex you've ever had in your entire life. And you never have sex like that ever again. Have you ever had sex like that ever again? Nah, but it didn't matter. Fuck it didn't that. like yeah. ruin. No, Shit. not at all. It didn't ruin that. it at all. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not saying go and do it. Um, and I took like what's it's like I guess at the time it was called like Tweak, which is like it, it was like. Um, what? Yeah, it was. It you was, know what Tweak is, bro? Yeah, it was like I'm tweaking, MD- dog. Yeah, like no fucking. Well, it wasn't any injectable. It was an oral, but it was a blend of like MDMA with <laughs> other drugs that like I didn't really. I wasn't even know. I don't even know what it was. How it, old were you when you did that? Uh, I was 22, 23. Yeah, we all do stupid shit. Okay, right makes now. sense. I did it with yeah. I did it with Brandon. Bradley Martin. Does <laughs> Shout out tweak. Brandon. Well, it's like. It's not like there was nothing inject. It was just a blend of because, like again, pure MDMA is like you could take it just by itself. Yeah, I've done that. It was a it was a blend of ecstasy and something else that like Damn. you, bro. It was in crazy. It was crazy. So I'll tell the story. Um, we go to I think it was in Riverside, and uh, we went to a girl talk concert. Have you ever heard of that girl talk? Girl talk. Have you ever heard of that TikTok? No, it's like a girl it's talk. Like, I have no idea what that is. Google bro. it if you guys. I don't know. It's like electric. Like it's like House. dubstep house electric type oh, music i know about some like festivals yeah yeah so it's stuff like that and I, i've yes. never gone to anything like this but my boys were like oh let's go to this and i remember we used to like bang it working out we listen to that shit working it's just like crazy crazy fucking like music. uplifting dubstep bro yeah it, it was dope and, and so i remember i took this stuff and i was like it, i don't even know how to describe it it was so it was like i was like super high and like really happy but then kind of antsy and like I don't know. Almost really, like Adderall, like, like Adderall yeah, it's MDMA. Like, it's like kind of like a lot of caffeine. Like a ton of like, caffeine. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember like me and Sylvie Sil- knows this shit. Me and Sylvie and like my other friends, like we would, we were all into like the house music and like EDM Yeah, I remember. Music. I seen old videos. Like, we would of you. go to like, um, what was a hard summer. I, I almost went to EDC. There was like all these other like, I don't know, fucking festivals. But I remember like they had already tried Molly and I had just met. was it just pure MDMA pure MDMA yeah. so, but it was like really strong like the guy that we got it from was like like a fucking really good Molly dealer bro but like <laughs> I don't know apparently this shit hit differently and I had never tried it in my life so I tried it for the first time and I everyone took the pill at the same time so we're all like in the middle of the crowd at this festival sun's going down we're like oh shit it's during the summertime so like it looks cool and everyone's like apparently like, if you take this fucking drug like it makes everything super euphoric and dope and I'm like, okay. So I, it's so the I first time. It's the first time I ever did this shit. Yeah. It was like, I think in was it senior year of high school. Yeah. Popped this Molly. Everyone takes it at the same time because we wanted to hit. And we take it, 15, 20 minutes goes by. And everyone's rolling their fucking ass off. Like their pupils are massive. Every, like, and I know when someone's rolling, like you start sweating, you get kind of pale. Yeah. And you get kind of, yeah, it's weird. Anyway, everyone's fucking pupils are massive. I'm looking at everyone and I don't feel a goddamn thing. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go in the middle of the crowd. I, I go in the middle of the crowd, find a random dude that kind of looked like maybe he might sell pills. Gave him, like, I think it was like 20 or 40 bucks. And I was like, hey, do you have any pills on you? <laughs> and he gave me like an orange pill and I didn't know what it was. I took that one. Why would you take no, it? Listen, you know what I, it was. I, took, I took that pill and I was walking back to like my group of like all my homies. As I'm putting that pill, like literally but what in did my, he say in what my it was? throat. He didn't even tell me. I think he told tic-tac. me it was like, I don't know what it was, bro. I'm pretty sure it was like, why would you take some? You wouldn't know. I don't know. Cause that's stupid. Guys, I wanted don't to do f- shit like that, by the way. Yeah. Don't do this. Um, but I was, as I was, especially that, nowadays, like motherfuckers, motherfuckers are motherfuckers. Yeah, but I hold on. I got to make sure motherfuckers are yeah, not don't dying. Don't do dude. this shit. Cause cause like I'm fentanyl and shit is crazy nowadays. No, that's even crazy. This is a few years ago. But as I was swallowing that second pill, I felt that come up of the Molly. And I knew that I took extra. Yes. And I was like, holy shit, dude. And like my, like I felt like I was going to fucking levitate. I felt like I didn't know. <laughs> so what, what, was, what happened when the second pill hit? I blacked out. I don't remember. What yeah. was it? What was it? Was that Molly or was that something else? I don't else? know, dude. I think it was ecstasy. You don't know. So I don't you, know what happened. 
but, so but we like, like we fucking were, roofie you? Anyway, like, I don't know. Anyway, did your so butt like, all hurt when you woke no, up? No, dude, listen. Okay, okay. okay. Right, listen, so, sure. so we're in the middle of the crowd and like the like by then it was like dark and I didn't even like remember it getting dark. Like that's how hard I was like rolling, right? And so that second pill must have hit me like in between. But I, I told my friends that I was gonna come back and I was gonna use the bathroom. And I'm walking through the crowd and it felt like all the people were zombies just staring at me. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? This is the worst shit in my life. So I'm like walking out having... Oh, you were too high. Yeah, I was way too high. Yeah. So I'm walking by myself. I sit on the grass and I just like knocked out. I knocked out and it was the greatest. I was like like laying on the floor. I was like, yo, this grass feels so good. <laughs> yeah, dude. Classic, classic. And I'm like, this is so dope. And I like lay down. And then like in between that time, like one of my friends came and like woke me up. Was Sylvie there? He was there, but he wasn't the one that came and got me. Wait, well, say what? Say it to the mic. Say it to the mic over there. What you got to say? So we all took the thing, right? Closer to get closer to the mic. We all took the pill. Jacob sees us. He takes it. He doesn't wait 20 minutes. He waits five minutes and goes, I don't feel shit. Oh my God. You're I an wanted idiot. To, I, wanted to, and, I and had he FOMO. Leaves, he leaves without saying anything to anybody. He comes back. Oh, I just took another one. We're like, what the fuck? I had me, FOMO. Me and, buddy, so you me and my buddy Nate are like, dude. What? He's like, no, I'm good. We Yo. don't see him the rest of the night. I call him after the festival is over. Dude, where are you? I'm in my car. <laughs> I was sitting in my car, dude. I couldn't handle it. I had FOMO. <laughs> so moral of the story, don't get FOMO while you're at festivals with no, your fucking no, friends. No, no, Moral of the story is don't take random drugs from fucking drug dealers without like... I had like, a fear of missing out, dude. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't mean you double dose on fucking drugs and one you weren't even sure about. Like that, guys, don't do that. Don't do that. So yeah. you, you learn your lesson, you dummy. Fuck yeah, it. it was pretty gnarly. So that, any, going back to the... Drugs. Oh, the tweak story? Well, not though. I mean, you, did you tell the whole story? Kinda. I mean, I just remember being fucked up in there, and like, it was like, f it was just a weird experience. Flashing, like, I was. It felt good, but at the same time, it was. You're I was like a little tweaking. bit anxious. Yeah, and the music's going fucking crazy. It was. I mean, it's kind of too much. Yeah, I'll tell you the story when I first, uh, the first and only time I ever took uh, blow. I've done my fair share. So, oh uh, my god. So, and I do not recommend this to anyone. This shit is terrible. I didn't like it. I didn't like so it at funny. all. Um, no, my story is great, dude. I'm going to tell the story like full. I'm not going to hold back. So, um, I was with a buddy of mine. I'm not going to say his name just to protect. Damn, this is a, f this, you know, this yeah. is about to get juicy. We're with two girls. Okay. So we're with two girls. Um, they're older. Both of them are older. One's blonde. Are they like, bad? Bad as fuck. Baddies. Like, we were like early, early 20. It might be like 21 or something. How old were they? They had to be like 30, 30 plus. Oh, to one blonde one, massive titties, <laughs> massive titties. One brunette one, massive titties. Tits or both, ass. Tits both, ass. both. Do oh. I like tits or ass? Yeah. I'm an ass guy. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's all good. Um, so both these girls were like dimes, bro. Like fucking like absolute in, rockets, rockets, hundred percent. And, uh, I think I had been talking to one of them on the, on like social media and then we ended up. I, don't, I think it was like, I don't know if this was like New Year's time. It was some time where people were going out and partying. And uh, we spent like the whole night together doing, like we went to some club and some bullshit, but the, this is the part that's important. Then like they were doing the blow. And now, and, and uh, I, I, I don't want to say the guy's name again. And my buddy was like, you want to try it? And he's like done it before, like once or twice. And I was like, ah, not really. And then they, he did some and they did some more. And um, we, we ended up going to their hotel room. You're so like, lines, are you going to turn to some Wolf of Wall Street? Here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and uh, it, it was a weird room. So let me explain the room so you guys can understand how like actually funny this is. It was a, I think it was the, I don't know if it was the standard in, on, on, on Hollywood Boulevard uh, down there on Sunset. No, Sunset. It might be, I think it's called the standard. I don't even know what it's called. It was like a hotel where the room was, you walk in and like, as you're walking straight, the bed is on this side and like a little bit of room and the, oh, okay. the bathroom is like, you keep walking straight. Like you go this way in the room and the bed is here, but the bathroom is here and where the bed is in the room is like down that way. But the bathroom where the shower is, is like glass. The fuck? Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember that. So imagine the beds here. So if you're sitting in the room, you're sitting in the room on the couch, on the, on the, on the, there's like a little couch chair area and then there's a bed and like the whole wall behind the bed is like glass. glass. So you could see right through it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> now, it sounds like a movie say, scene. Though. It is. It is like a movie scene. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Because I didn't, I was so focused on what was going on and like over this way, we were by this table. They did the blow and then I ended up there like, you want to do it? And I did it off the girl's titty. 
okay, with a hundred dollar bill. The only way to do it. So I did it. And I'll be honest, I didn't, at first I was like, oh, I like it. And then like, I would say like four minutes went in and I was like, like uh, not even four minutes, like maybe like two minutes, like right away it felt good. But after you kind of, and then like a couple minutes, I was like, well, I feel really fucking anxious. Um, like my heart rate, I didn't like it. Okay. (laughs) So anyways, I didn't do it again. And it's a very like short lived thing. You have to kind of keep doing it. it, So anyways, I'm with the girl and I'm talking to her. They did it a few more times. I ended up like getting her into the bathroom. (laughs) I got to tell this story, man. And so Did you he, pipe? Yeah, so listen. But I didn't know. Got to see it through, my boy. Of course, but that's the thing, man. You got to the end of the line. But remember, the, the thing is clear. So we end up turning on the shower because okay. I was like, we're owning a shower and then do it, right? I don't want to, I don't like doing it in the shower. I'm going to tell you guys, shower sex is terrible sex, okay? It's fucking horrible. It's like two out of 10. But we were like out the whole night. So I was like, yo, let's shower because I knew I was kind of fucking stinky, yeah. right? So I was like, I don't want to like, you know, smelly dick, this girl, you know? So it was like, I didn't want to do her dirty like that. So I was like, let's, let's shower. So we're like kissing and shit and showering and like, you know, the whole like foreplay, foreplay type bullshit, shit. Yeah. So it gets steamy, which again, I wasn't aware of any of this, like the, the scene through. And anyways, it was a big enough shower. You know, they have like those little benches on the sides. Yeah, you can yeah, like yeah. sit. So it was kind of like a dope little shower. It was a dope shower. Yeah. yeah. And um, we, anyways, we get to doing it. I don't even know how long it lasted. Probably not that long because I was so excited. This girl was like so hot to me. And then, you know, we put all our stuff on and I we go back in the room and like and they're Brand, all staring at you. There's only two people. There's only two other people. Oh. Um, my boy and the girl that he was with. And um, <laughs> and like they're chilling and they're, you know, we walk out and like they're like. They're acting kind of weird. Yeah, they're acting kind of weird. <laughs> Did they like, watch. They saw the entire thing, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. It was like clear, clear, clear. I think it was starting to get fogged up. So like you couldn't see it fully, fully, Damn, but it was clear dude. and I wasn't aware of the whole thing. But then he told me later, he's like, yeah, that shit. Like you can see right. It's kind of dope though. At least, yeah. so, you know, like your homies like daps you up. Yeah. At least you like, yeah, it was, it really was proven. amazing. I really piped. I, I remember after like trying to like, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't remember the number. And I was like, I was like trying to do it again. Cause like it was dope. It was like good. And I couldn't, I never got. Never got it again. Jesus Christ. But that was, yeah, that was my cocaine, so, which is a lame. I mean, fuck, man. Don't do cocaine, by the way. That shit's lame as fuck. That's lame as shit. Oh, let's talk about a, going back to Miami and like with Steve. What do you want to talk about? What was the scariest moment? Oh, fuck. I have, I have one. Have the really scariest one. moment? Yeah. I don't know. Dude, you don't remember this shit? What? Okay, so. Was it, a, was it with me? What was the scary? Yeah, we were all together, dude. It was you, me, Steiny, and Steve. And we oh. were coming back from, I think it was Bahamas, bro. Yes. Do you remember this shit? Okay, I'll just tell the fucking story. So we were in Bahamas for like three days from Friday to like Sunday. And we were with Murda. We were with 6 9 Yeah. Danny. And it was, it was all of us. We were like a whole group. So we had just finished like being there. We're going through Bahamas. It's so different out there too. Like we had to take like this little like boat like thing to okay, go I to know our taxi. Remember it was like super yeah. sketch. Anyway, so like we're, we're coming back on this like little like boat thing to go to this airstrip. And then when we got to the airport, the airport was so like weird, dude. It was like one conveyor belt. There was like one door. Yeah. There was one conveyor belt. It was a little belt. island airport. Yeah, it was like a little like tiny like island airport. So like we're like going through. Um, and then we, we get to the airstrip and it's like these propeller planes, bro. It's not like a jet. This isn't like a normal plane. It's like a propeller plane. Like they're like fucking sketch, dude. Yeah, for sure. And so like it only like you can, you have to like literally like sit on different corners of this oh, plane fuck. because you're talking about if now. there's too much weight on one plane, it's going to be like fucking flying out yeah, of the that's, air. It was, these were really it was like small. a Madagascar plane. Yeah, like those exactly. like old shitty Madagascar. These planes. were little scary. Like fucking it looked planes, like, like it was no, like built together with fucking duct tape. A hundred percent. These fucking glue. These are the planes that people die on. Yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, they were flying from here to there, and they just crash on the runway. And That's, so, like, keep in mind, like, we flew in there not on a propeller plane. We we got there in a boat. We took a yacht. Yeah, remember? we did. Yeah. So I we Which hadn't was like so we hadn't dumb. Flown. Why we didn't, did we do that? I don't know. So stupid. I don't Fuck know. Anyway, so we took a we took a yacht there, and I didn't know what it was like flying into Bahamas. So we're leaving. We get in this propeller plane. It's me, Steve, Steiny, and Brad. We we're like literally like about to shit bricks because Steiny's like, we look at Steiny like, have you done this before? And he's like, yeah, it's really sketchy. It makes me feel alive. And I was like, 
Uh, what are you fucking Stein, talking about? He's a little about? psychopath. So we take off and it's like super like sketch. I feel like I'm in a paper airplane. Um, and we like, we're, we're in the air and we're just cruising the entire way. And so keep in mind, like Bahamas is a little Island dude. So it's like just water below you. Yeah. Like if you crash, you're dying, bro. Like you're fucked. You're probably going to drown and die. So we're flying over like the ocean and it, it, everything's smooth sailing until we kind of start to get back into Miami. You remember the shit? Yeah. And so like, we're literally in Florida and there's a huge rain cloud. Like you can't really escape it. Massive I mean, rain cloud. I mean, it was cloud. a really big, dark rain cloud because it always rains in Like, Florida. you saw this bitch when you were in that yeah. little plane. And you were so like, we're Fuck. like, we're like me and Brad and Steve kind of just like all look at each other. And we're like, are we going to fly through that fucking yeah. looking cloud? Well, and then we started to go around it. And then he was like, he was like, the, the pilot started like flying around it. But then I think it was kind of like, I think he miscalculated it. But like, we basically flew straight into this cloud of yeah rain. we we went around a big circle but then he started flying no into no it. no so we go around and as we start to come back because like we we had to fly out of the way of the airport to pass this big ass rain cloud over like over it was just like marshland yeah. like if you went down there you're not, fucked if you if you didn't die from the crash you were dying from a crocodile 100 percent, you were getting <laughs> eaten by a fucking cro- i remember looking at the, the march and being like Yo, if we crash, like it's game. You're dead. You're yeah. 100% dead. There's, there's no, like there's no, no chance. chance of living. There's a no snake, roads. It's just all marsh. All marsh. So we do this big circle around. And then, yeah, because we're going to go back to the actual airport in Miami. And as we start to go back, this motherfucker damn near drives right through it. And the fucking plane is like, Dude, yeah, the plane, the plane, like I told you, it's like a fucking Madagascar plane. So, like, we're that all go- we're going and it's like, Roo, roo. And yeah. it's like, we all looked at each like, other i'm like this with the yeah. camera in my hand i'm like dude i'm gonna die like i'm yeah. dying today this is it and i like, did for like five seconds yeah and i'm like, like my heart's like like beating dude and i'm like holy fuck i'm trying not to be a pussy you know i'm like just yeah. sitting there like really uncomfortably and i'm like holding the camera i'm like i'm gonna record this because if my mom and dad find this fucking footage you guys can replay yeah. this and this is how i died yeah. i literally my heart was like for five seconds, I was like, yo, we're going to, yeah, we're going like, down. We're, gonna die. we're going down. Yeah. Like, 100%. Um, and then I was like, fuck it. Cause it came, came Yeah. And then like, up. once we got through it, like it was just like smooth again. I was like, holy shit. I almost just, yeah. But how about, I pants. mean, can we tell this story The even sketchier story with the, uh, oh. can we even <laughs> tell that story with the guns and shit? I don't, I don't think, think so. we can. That's a little too. Yeah. We'll say it. I'll, we'll tell you guys after. Yeah. We'll tell you guys so after crazy. we actually can't tell this story. We were, where, where were we? Cabo? What if we, or, just make, Cancun? What if we don't say names? <clears throat> nah, it's too sketchy. It's way too sketchy. Just We'll put it this way. People pulled up on us with guns. I'll just say that. While we were in Mexico. While we were in Mexico. In a hotel. In a hotel. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty sick. Yeah, anyways, we can't tell. That's the worst <laughs> fuck. They're going to be like, fuck you, yeah, motherfuckers. that was like a crazy, crazy story, but we can't. That was that. actually one of the fucking scariest fuck. What is this? What the hell? Oh, that's current events. Oh, shit. Yo, let's talk about some current events. Instagram. I don't want to talk about... Okay, well, I guess we could talk about that. Why? It's family before it's by influencers. We'll have to cut here and then continue. So, yeah, they go. just paused randomly and we're like, let's go into current events. So there's a list of Well, them. you're going to have to cut that ugly ass pause out. I know. I thought uh, of keeping it. You guys are both sitting uh, here we're like, like, scratching hey, your head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, so there's a couple of current events. Okay, um, the mic. One of them I thought was interesting is obviously it's been raining a lot so brazil has a deadly flood going on and 18 people have already been found dead and a lot of people are not in their homes over a thousand people so Damn. thousands of people I, and i'm telling you this flood is gnarly like i absolutely love brazil damn i've never been there we'll have to go we'll, uh, we'll go we'll take a trip maybe we'll bring sylvie that's too. pretty gnarly imagine if california flooded like that yeah, I mean, well, fucking remember Katrina, like, fucking killed everyone over there. Yeah, that's pretty sad. That's, and not California, obviously, Katrina, but uh, New Orleans. Yeah, this, I mean, fuck. I, I don't know enough about Brazil, like, the infrastructure. I just know when I was there, I was like, there are spots that are, like, nice, and there are spots that are, like, really like the fucked favela, up. Like, favelas. Like, like really super fucked up. Super sketch out there. Um, but it's interesting. The interesting thing about Brazil is, like, I don't think the favelas would be the most, even though, yeah, they're going to get rained on and get fucked with, with liquid, like, with water, but... The favelas, it's weird. And this is an interesting thing. I don't, I don't, you wouldn't get this. I don't know if people listening would, understand, would, would see this, but in America, like the rich people with all the money live up on the hills. In Brazil, the poor people live up on the hills in favelas. Oh. It's strange. That's it, kind it's, of different. That's yeah. Like, so go that's ahead. That's like throughout all of South America. So like that, if that you is? go on the hills, yeah. So like in Chile, there's some parts that um, in the hills and things like that. There's just a lot of little homes like that. I mean, it's not called favela in Chile, but there's just like the poor, like more 
yeah. you know, poor sides of it. And then like the nice. I wonder why that is. Do you beach. know why that is? No, I mean, it, honestly, it's because it's like one, it, the terrain is like not even or leveled and it's not near like cities. It's not near oh, big probably cities. probably super So sketch. when they're in the hills, yeah, like the hills. there's no stores near there. There's none of that. Like there may be like little strips, like, you know, the Santee Alleys in LA. Like if yeah. you had to relate their grocery shopping and stuff, it's kind of like the Santee Alleys. People just yeah. put up their stands and sell things. Yeah, that's exactly and what And that's how like. they get their food and all that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. So Imagine living like in the that. hills where like it was just like miles. It was like... Bro, it was like that. Brazil is fucking beautiful, bro. Yeah, go, I love Brazil. I'd love to go back. It's one of my favorite places ever to travel to. Um, look at this shit. Instagram looking for ways to pay influencers. They're finally feeling the finally. heat from TikTok. That's crazy. That's actually kind of dope. It is cool. That's cool. I mean, it's you know, it was a long time coming, but shout out Instagram. We appreciate well, you. I thought Instagram was already doing that. Well, uh, through ads and stuff, I guess, right? What are your guys' thoughts, though? Like, do you think, like, other social media platforms will no longer exist if Instagram does do this transition? No. Or no. do you think, like, it will it, like, end TikTok? Will it end Snapchat? Like, well, what are your about, thoughts? What's fa- Facebook? Isn't Facebook anymore? What's it called? Well, listen, it's called Metaverse. Yeah, it's called Meta. It's actually called just Meta. Dude. Anyways, here's the deal. I think, uh, as far as social media goes, Instagram, yes, is still, I would say, the number one place for people to go to for all kind of things, right? And TikTok is... And, but TikTok is 100% oh, wave, is a hand in hand right now. TikTok is not... They're not just like another social media app. They're a whole nother app that people use just as religiously, I would say, as, as Instagram is what it appears to me. And I'll tell you this from my perspective as an influencer and as being an influencer for so many years, <clears throat> I've seen waves of so many apps come and go, come and go, come and go. TikTok 100% is going fucking nowhere. That shit is is becoming even more of a popular app than it ever TikTok? has been. Yes, absolutely. It's going nowhere. And the reason why I say this is not just because of like, you know, people are getting views and this and that, but I've seen people who are able to grow, guy and girls, in certain industries, their entire audience base from, from TikTok, TikTok. Which exa- which says an example too isn't Noah Back. Didn't yeah. he blow up from TikTok? Hundred percent. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. But there's people in the fitness space, there's people in every space. And that's that's the reason why I think it's I want to make this point. Like the apps come and go all the time and like, but people always revert back to Instagram, but TikTok is becoming a place where brand new, like, and I'm even seeing creators who like, like just at the gym today, those two kids that came in. Oh yeah. The, uh, the curly fuck guy. <laughs> that's his name. Curly fuck. That's his that's name. That's his name. That's his name. That's a dope no, name. No, that's not his name. Curly fuck. I thought it was curly. It's not. <laughs> I generally have no idea. Nah, straight up. No, that's a name. sick name. No, 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 no. I'm not fucking playing with you. The, the dude, the If that's the brothers. case, I'm going to change my Instagram name to shitty videographer. Nah, but it's like, look, look, hold on. I'll do it that right That already now. exists, by the uh, way. I it is. It. Look, bro. His name is literally curly, curly fuck. fuck with a Q. Look. Wow. Curly F-U-Q. Anyways, this guy's in the gym. His brother, they, 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 they moved out here from Wisconsin. The point is this. This kid is getting like millions of views, right? Moved out to of, LA. A lot of brand deals, right? Tons of brand deals. He's building a business from TikTok. It wasn't like he came on Instagram. His Instagram is much smaller. He was on Instagram and built it and then went there. His He came from fucking TikTok. And the fact that there's people who are succeeding out, that That's says everything. Really insane. It says everything. So TikTok's going nowhere. Instagram, obviously, if they if they keep making the right moves, they're they're never going to be rele- irrelevant. Um, I think TikTok's... TikTok, it just seems to be like the place where there's less throttling. They have, they're allowing people to get more views. Yeah. It kind of seems like you can, they're giving a people with smaller audiences, the opportunity to like kind of to get views, get up. Yeah. yeah. To get people because to see like Instagram. I don't think. Really, yeah. Instagram's it a favor, hard place. It doesn't it, favor. The and the thing with Instagram that sucks is like, it's just, it seems like they just keep making it harder and harder and harder to succeed at. Yeah. Like, I think that would be the bane and like, that would be the end of fucking Instagram. I mean, I don't, again, I don't think it's ever going to end cause people will always be on that app, but like people not wanting to create and like just go create on a different platform, yeah. whether it be like YouTube shorts or, um, you know, TikTok or whatever, Snapchat it's TikTok has made it so much harder to succeed. Uh, excuse me. Instagram has made it so it's, much yeah, harder Instagram's to succeed. Lot, TikTok's a lot like, yeah, they that. start paying some people. That's cool. But they still have made it like really, really. I wonder what the hard. next app is going to be. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be another, like, because here's the, the deal. Next, like 10 to 20 years, there might be like another one. Here's the deal with the, these apps, social media. Cause like apps. TikTok came out of kind of like nowhere. You Cause it was Vine. Remember Vine back in the day? Like, oh, so like, for, for something else to come out, they'd have to create a new way to digest content again, because that's why TikTok succeeded because the platform is literally like video, 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 the whole thing, you just swipe in its videos and they seem to give you good recommendations just based on what you're engaging with. Yeah. Um, but everything has always been, oh, it's a video. Oh, it's this, right? TikTok came in and, and fucked the whole game up because they were like, 
you know, they were making the new type, the same content, but they 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 put a whole new twist on it. That like you know, adding the sounds, the trend, and like the fact it's that those an, it's an addicting app. Do you ever find yourself just at night, dude? I can't fall asleep. Now I had to stop going on my. I yeah. can't go to sleep unless I watch like a thousand TikToks, and then I like. Like, all right, well, you're a psychopath. I mean, to, that's true. Well, it's also too because we're in that realm of yeah, it's true. Of that. Yeah, keep because doing like, that. Because Watch like, I, it, it helps me. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, fry my fucking brain. Yeah. No, but don't like, ever it, sleep. No, because, Can you never sleep? Yeah, dude. Okay, Let me cool. go back. Sick. Let me go back a few months. Yeah. No, never sleep now. Rail out. Start working harder again, please. Anyway. Jesus Christ, Chris. Can you get him to work harder again, please, Chris? Anyways, we'll get back to it. Yeah. No. No. I mean, dude. It's it's just. You know, the apps that are going to succeed now or new apps are going to come, they're going to have to put a whole new spin. And I, the, the reason why I don't know if there's going to be new ones like that is like, I feel like they've done it all now. And like, cause you could tell that's what as you soon think. as, yeah, I know. Right. You as thought, soon as Instagram you, is Instagram got the reels. Cause they're like, once they saw just like Instagram got the you Snapchat, know crazy? they you know got the crazy? stories talking about like apps and shit too. Like you think that there's like not going to be another big viral app like TikTok or Instagram. What then explain the fucking metaverse, bro. What is well, that? That's okay, like an so, app. I mean, is that considered kind of like an app? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, like a it's video a game, virtual dude. reality type shit. You've heard about that, right? What? Metaverse? Of course. It's like literally you, but, put, bro, the you meta put on goggles and now like you can make money in this virtual reality world. I don't, I mean, I haven't done it, but like. That's, I've seen videos of it and like. It's how far is it going to go? My question is like, are we, I feel like we're, we're going to be like in little, we're going to be in small pods like this and just and do nothing but plugged in and like directly and we're gonna play and now this is our new life it's gonna be like avatar or like um what's the other one wally where we become just like fat like potatoes yeah but it's like it's it's just weird bro it's like like are we gonna eat like because here's the deal like hairs and shit we're like because have you ever done the vr thing where you put the thing on your face and you like yeah because that's what it's supposed to be like where it's like you're in that world right but do more things in it They're like it's like dude are you gonna be fucking in there you're gonna be lifting weights in there like what's going on you're gonna fuck there? like a robotic girl you know like what yeah like you need to put oil robot pussy. you need to give that bitch oil or something like i don't know would but, you okay would you fuck robot pussy bro that's like that's like would i you're fuck talking a about flashlight like fem, like, fem bots? you're talking about some yeah, awesome power shit huh like like a, i mean they got blow up dolls are a thing wait what thing. wait what where do, all right, all right, send me the link to that yeah, there's, what's the lo- no, there, it's like a thing. I swear. There's Fem bots, bots that were, you fuck were already. These, were these guys who were like, they have a fixation with like fucking a robot that okay, they create I'm a, like a like a physical no, but they, robot that but comes that's what over I'm to saying. me and sucks they me dry. They made it. I'm telling you, they Wait, made so it. So this thing like sucks you off. <laughs> no, like they make it where she could talk, she could move, she could do the motions. So when you're like. When you're fucking her, she is this does a real? The can you thing. pull yes. this up? Pull this up on the internet. That's so wild. I want to see this. I would do it. What? Yeah, Maybe bro. Like what? One... That's like, that's like. What if it's like the no, great wait? Pop. It's just like advanced jerking off. That's what it is. It's like you're advancing. You. It's, it's like kind of like a, your evolution of jerking off. Like you know, like the pocket pussy. Exactly. Just an but advanced it's a, pocket. Yeah, pussy. It's, it's the evolution of jerking. <laughs> no, it's like, like dude, what the fuck? Where do I buy one of these? Yo, What's the best sex robot in 2021? Are these real though? Like, hey, like that's not a sex robot there. Okay, see, yeah, see, you're you're not even well, finding. I don't know. It. No, dude. I'm telling you, I watched a documentary about it. She oh, watches like oh. sex. The robot only reason porn? why I did it. So is what my the fuck and, are you watching? No, my friend and I were extremely bored, and we're like, "What the fuck is this? This is weird." People oh, are that's weird. That's how it starts. We're extremely and then bored. We clicked it, and then we're. That's like, how butt stuff starts. Too. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, I'm super bored. Maybe like we'll play with each other's butts." Wow. Okay. What the fuck? Whoa. These aren't. What the fuck? Oh my God. Fuck? Those are sex dolls. Yeah, these are dolls. I know. <laughs> Anyways. Nah, dude. Uh, would I fuck a sex doll? I don't know. I don't think so. But like one no, of these. robot. Like, yeah, well, that's different. Yeah, the sex doll, no way. What the fuck? It looks so real. Comment robot. <laughs> What's the world best sex robot? This is crazy. So, so like when the metaverse things, uh, like, I don't know if we're talking about these specifically, but like what is going to happen? Like, are people going to stop working out? I'm curious. I'm still working out. Dude. I don't think... I, I don't really... I feel care. like, is working out going to change? I hope not, dude. Please don't try to change like, working out. what if out. they make it so addicting that, like, humans get addicted to it? It's kind of like us on our phones. You know, like, you put the metaverse... Go- Once you put the metaverse goggles yeah. on, just... No oh, my God. Back. Imagine they make it... That's like, the it doesn't, scary part. It, and it doesn't, like... You wouldn't even know because you're just stuck it's in It's like the you world take now. it off and you're just fucking depressed. You're like, you just completely you just hate life. You're sucked out of life. It's like you're just... Are we just getting skinny and small? Is this how aliens are made? We just evolve through that and then we just... We don't need our arms I and think our legs the next, and shit. Like, we just use our brains. I think next... Like, the next 50, 100 years... What? Metaverse might be the new thing. 
But, but the new thing in the sense of everything? That's looking like Dude, Jesus. Dude, look, she That's can open her lips and shit. What, what are they doing? Is it like a sex robot convention? Dude, look, she's, she's darker skin tone, nice and tan. Just mm. your type. Interesting. You could like wow. build up. Oh my God. Build a bitch. Build a bitch. It's like build a. Don't say. Don't say that. Fuck build shit. Build a, a woman. Build a beautiful, a beautiful, woman. strong woman. Yes. Build a bitch. Dot com. <laughs> Coming to you live from the metaverse. Jesus Christ, dude. That'd be lit. That'd be dope. I would do it. I don't know if Maybe I would. Once it's, or twice. Yeah. It's maybe it's just still. Try it. It's still weird to me. But That's no, the metaverse shit's it's gonna take over. I just wonder like what's the actual interactions between people. Like, how is that going to affect that? Because I feel like be we're just going to get social. Yeah, but it's just going to get crazier, dude. Imagine, yeah. imagine, you know how like you go to you go to places you go to a dinner every eat? every time you go to a dinner, you like go this. anywhere and you hang out with your friends. What's like everyone's doing? Everyone's on the phone. And, like, and imagine when it's like, are we going to be at dinner in like? Oh, sorry. Oh, hey, yeah. Let's. What's going on? Yeah, sorry. I was. Let in, me take out my fucking VR. I was goggles. at Mount Everest. You know, like. Yeah. I don't know. It's fucking crazy, man. I was at Mount Everest. You guys just. Oh, I forgot like, I was even here. Yeah. Whatever. Um, we'll talk about this one. Whoa. Sp- Did you watch the new Spider Man? I haven't. You're a loser, dude. Spider Man dies. If you haven't watched That's it. That's cat. Okay. I haven't watched it. it. How was it? Can't was give it spo- We're not going to give spoilers on the podcast. You're going to piss people off. Spider Man dies. I'm sorry. You know, one of the funniest things that's not true Spider Man didn't die. I don't really know because I don't want to give a spoiler. Anyways, did you see the thing? Did you see the thing on the internet where um, some guy was giving spoilers like right when the movie came out, uh, like on some like meme shit? And he was like replying and like giving the spoilers and oh, someone fucked. replied and was like sent his IP and his address, his home oh. address, his IP and his home address. Like, yeah, you want to give away the spoilers, you motherfucker? Yo, that shit's I serious. I know where you live. That's serious. This was one of the most popular movies like ever, this movie, which is crazy. People were cause saying that Spider-Man was the greatest Marvel movie ever. They were. And I don't know if I feel that way, but it was one of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen. I don't think it was the greatest Marvel movie. I you didn't see it, motherfucker. No, well, hold on. I'm just going to say that it wasn't because it probably wasn't. Okay, well, that's dumb, but you can't. It's like, that's it like probably, saying, like, I never saw this movie, but it's probably not this. That's the dumbest thing I've ever it. heard. But I'm going to watch it. I'll watch it. Yes, and, and then you back. could have your shitty opinion. I'll come back okay? with my opinions. Um, but past, I, they just fucking passed a billion dollars, apparently. That's insane. I thought they were just doing 350 that's million. That's light work. No, this was today. So this is one of the number one selling movies in the world, then. Like, ever. Who is your favorite superhero? Mine? Spider Man? Thor. Yeah, that's Those are my favorite. Love them. I mine is probably better. Gonna, question is, go ahead though. Answer your yeah. Um, well, so I don't think Batman. I know it's DC, He's, bro. Yeah, it's DC, too. but I mean, because it's still Batman a superhero. Batman isn't a superhero. He's a silent protector. Okay, well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's a human. You're right. He's a rich motherfucking human who learned how to fight. He's got a lot of technology. Batman's dope, bro. It's basically like fucking. You know. And his storyline's pretty dope. I'm Batman. It's basically like Iron Man. Yeah, still a superhero. Iron, dope. Iron Man is one of my favorite too. Anyways, if you could be any superhero though, who would you be? Shit. Like, and really use their superpower. Probably Doctor Strange. That dude right there. Yeah, I mean, because that dude like opens up portals of time. I can go back and you know change. But shit. like, what if you fuck things up when you do that? Like, you're a little reckless. You could fuck things up. Yeah, I know, but Doctor Strange knows what he's doing, so I'd have Doctor Strange's powers in mind, so I would just be Doctor Strange. So you would know what you're doing. Exactly, you're so saying. I can go back and, you know... Do that is one of the cool... Su- and you know the, the... Oh, fuck, I can't give this spoiler. Like, if I was talking to a hot chick... I'm getting... Like spoiler like 10, alert. 10, 10, spoiler alert. Pause, Don't listen 10, to this. If I was talking like a 1010 Instagram mo- model and I fumbled a bag... I could just Doctor Strange open but up couldn't the portal. You just, couldn't you just Doctor Strange and not fumble the bag? Because she'd be impressed by the Doctor Strange. But I've vibe. I always fumble the bag. But, but how I'm saying that if I open up the, the portal and I go back and I fuck the ten times. Yeah, but like, way. wouldn't you just do more like finessing if you were Doctor Strange? You'd be like, well, you you want to go to fucking the snow? You know what I'm saying? And then Come with her, me. Take her yeah. to Alaska. You know? How would you? How could you fumble that bag? You can't dude? fumble it. After you that. literally well, can't well, fumble I wouldn't that bag. No, you gotta like trial and error. You could be like, "Have you ever been to the Taj Mahal?" And she's like, "No." Oh my god. But that's the like, problem. What if she becomes a villain after that? Like, because then you're she showing become, yeah, her yeah, the Because yeah, j- j- Jacob fucked her, maybe she becomes. I'll probably a villain. ruin her life. That's why. Anyway, yeah. who's your favorite superhero, and why would you be there? Well, if we're talking about application, like if I could really use these powers, duh, Superman. Duh. Superman? Superman does everything. I don't know if that... It's a kind of a cheat code to pick that guy. He flies. He fucking freezes shit. He's, he zooms shit with his fucking eyes. Like, this guy does everything. You can't shoot uh, him. Yeah. It's like... That's pretty dope. You could just do anything. Yeah, but it, like Doctor Strange could just open a portal and you try to like zoom me. Yeah, but you know, like... And I just zoom you to like 19 fucking Yeah, Superman 50. can't do that. And Superman, uh, his weakness is kryptonite. Let me just stab you with like a stone of kryptonite and you're dead. Yeah, but like... 
I'd be such a smart Superman that you would never get kryptonite near me. I would be alternate reality universe Superman that I would fucking take all the kryptonite. I'd have like someone get it all and remove it all from the fucking planet and be gone. I would be like, Dr. Strange, I'll fucking kill you. Get this shit all gone. Make it disappear and then kill him so no one knows where it went. And I'm good. That sounds like Brad wouldn't want to be a superhero. It sounds like he'd want to be a super villain. I do. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be dope to be a super villain. I feel like I am a super villain. What super villain would you pick, though? Like if you an, had evil to pick one. <laughs> an evil no, Superman. Evil Superman. Evil su- oh, okay, Which sorry. is like, by the way, spoiler alert, the next movie. Uh, Wait, the, no, don't give no spoiler to I have to. Fuck, no. I have to. It's Everyone knows. I mean, at this point, I they kind of know. It's been a time. I don't. At the end, there's a trailer about Doctor Strange being evil. Which is going to be fucking dope. Okay, I can't cool, wait for that. You ruined the movie for everyone. Thank no, no, no. That's a trailer. It's not part of the movie. It's at the end. It's the second uh, cut scene. Anyways, go fuck yourself. What, what, what else is up what on that board? We have on this? Do we have any questions? Because I got to piss. How far are we? What? How far are we? There's no farness, you dummy. What is that? What was the most interesting person? So the question was, what was like the most interesting and like coolest person you met where like they kind of exceeded your expectations yeah you exceeded your expectations i'll go first oh that's um, a good question mine would probably have to be honestly probably steve-o i mean steve-o was pretty cool yeah he's a pretty cool dude and he's done like an like an insane amount of things in his life so when i was a kid i used to, me and my cousin used to watch all of his shit like religiously so to like you know even be able to like kick it with him and like you know film yeah. Be with him. It's kind I mean, of that guy's a legend, man. He's a fucking legend, man. I grew up watching it. If shit. you ask anyone on the street what Jackass is, they're gonna know at least one thing. Even even I'd say even younger kids. Yeah, even the a younger lot of generation people. Knows. A lot of people know who Steve O is. So that, I think that was probably one of the coolest people I met. I didn't really know Steve that well. I didn't really watch his stuff. But I'm sure like some other kid around the world would probably like kill to meet Steve or even yeah. you know be with him. But yeah, for sure, he's cool too. Everyone, honestly, everyone that I've met this year, we met Dana White. Yeah, Dana White's dope as Dana fuck. Dana White's cool. I love Dana White. Bob Manoray. I've never met him. He's pretty cool. Bob's Alt. a tweaker, but he's cool. Bob takes a lot of Adderall. That guy's wild, dude. What I think he, he said he's he always, stopped. He's he stopped always, and he starts. He's always zapped. Yeah, that's his thing. Um, Nelk Boys. The first time I ever met the Nelk Boys, they're pretty dope, too. I mean, their whole team is pretty chill. All the videographers are cool. Um, yeah, they got a solid squad, for sure. Yeah. I mean, everyone that I've met has been pretty cool this year. I've never really met anyone that was like anyone black. that you didn't like. <laughs> um, you were like this. I just no, nah, dude. I out. honestly, I don't really know. Everyone seemed pretty cool to me, besides Silby, because I know how you really feel about him. But you don't talk about all yeah. Time. It's like, it's but cool. everyone that we met this year, you know, I'm fucking. It was, I'm stoked to meet everyone. It's pretty dope. Yeah, they didn't really give me a reason to not like them. Maybe Steiny, sometimes. <laughs> He's a dickhead sometimes. Steiny was a dickhead to me sometimes. Yeah, he was. But now uh, I love Steiny. Yeah, yeah. He Steiny's reflects a fucking, on you. Steiny's a fucking man. But he, when I dope. first started working there, he wasn't really fucking with me, I feel like. Yeah, he would flex on you too. But he kinda. does that. Yeah, he does. You know, he does that get, to you, me, dude. You gotta, you, well, it's like you got to prove yourself, man. He does it. He tries to finesse fucking, you, bro. Are you a fucking warrior? Yeah. Or are you a little bitch? Which is, I got to tell this story. This story is one of my favorite stories. Was I love you, Steiny. I'm just fucking with you, man. No, fuck Steiny. Fuck that guy. I still love him. He's a good guy. Anyways, he's a shithead though. So listen to this story. So we're um, we're in Florida. We are going to fish with sharks. We're gonna not fish with sharks. We're going oh to God. swim with sharks. And um, it's we're in Miami. We're driving two hours. We didn't know this. We thought it was like one hour. We're driving two, like two almost two and a half hours to uh, where what part? What city was that? It was like uh, what's the name? Fort of that? Lauderdale. No, no, no. It wasn't Fort Lauderdale. Past. Fort Lauderdale. No, it was called. Uh, fuck, we went there and did the blue, the black tip uh, fishing guy there. Like we we did the. It's it uh, about, bro. Jupiter or some shit. Jupiter. I don't know. Okay, so we're driving to Jupiter from Miami. What? It's Jupiter. I swear to God, like we're driving literally to fucking space. Apparently, so we're, we're we wake up in the morning and I'm like kind of a little sick, not really that sick, not feeling too great. Hmm. And I found out, okay, the last night, the night before, okay, we're going to go on a boat. I'm like, fuck. I, I'm thinking, like, we're just going to drive, like, in the boat, like, you know, a little bit offshore, and then we're going to start, you know, jumping in the water with these sharks. So that's my expectation. I wake up in the morning, and I know we're filming this video for Steve. I vlog some of it. It's on, it's on my channel as well. Um, we wake up in the morning. I get out of bed. I walk I walk down. I'm talking to Steve. He's in the living room. We're, like, we're getting hype. He's filming, like, a little bit before we, like, are getting in the van. 
Jacob. I'm like, all right, where's Jacob? Jacob's like can in I, the room in between. Can I like intertwine my story? Yeah, yeah. Me? Hold on. I want to. I want to tell my perspective first. So funny. So we're in the living room talking, and then we're like, Jacob. We're like, come on, let's go. We're gonna leave. We gotta go down. And like, that's kind of how it was in Miami. It was really like, we're like last minute, show up, film here. Like, let's go. Like, come up to the gym. It was really fast here. paced. Like, it was fast paced. You had, to be, you had to be ready. Like when you wake up, you got to be fucking ready. Yeah. I had to be ready to start. Like, you know, hopefully you fucking, you cleared your SD card. You fucking had your camera charged. Yeah. Like you had to be ready. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, as soon as I woke up and as soon as like, it was basically as soon as I woke up, I was like, yo, let's go. And then they were like, all right, we're going. So we're like, Jacob. Okay. This guy comes out of the room, walks towards us to the living room is covered in fuck. I'm talking about covered in sweat. Like this guy looks like he just jumped out of a fucking shower with his shirt on. He has the camera in his left hand. He's holding the camera and I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, this guy is like, he's like 10 days away from death. Okay. That was like 10 hours. This guy, you know, literally days though, like actually might've been days and uh, no, like actually died in 10 days. I really mean that. So anyways, I look at him and I'm like, all right, let's go. You're an asshole, dude. Let's go. I was like, you're ready. You look great. And he's like, dude, I'm fucking, I was sweating in my bed. I, I'm shaking, all this crazy shit. Brad didn't um, give a flying. Zero fucks. Fuck, dude. So, but this was the best part about this story was I was like, no, nah, Jacob's a warrior. He, and he was like, fuck it, I'll come. He was like, you could tell he wasn't super happy about coming, but he was like. Dude, it was so obvious. I was like. But he was like, face. fuck it, it I'll just come. Straight face. The best part about this, we go downstairs to Steve's other condo and we're going to get Steiny now. So it's me, Alex. Uh, Jacob, Steve, we're going down like a few stories to get to get uh, Steiny. We go in, Steiny's like trying to sleep. It's early in the morning and he's like, we're banging on his door and he's like, dude, I'm so sick. I'm not going. I'm not going. And the funniest shit was, I swear to God, Steiny saw Jacob, camera in his hand, like looking like shit. And he was like, God damn it. I literally, he like literally said it. He was like, God damn it, dude. (laughs) He was like, cause like if you were out, he would have been like, yo, I'm out too. There was no way. But because this is so funny how this crew worked because he knew Jacob was down bad and he couldn't tell Steve, no, like I'm not going to come when he knew that Steve knew that Jacob was going, dude. Yeah. We had to get it. And then we drove like two and a half hours to fucking Jupiter, fucking the space. But literally it's a town called Jupiter, I think. On the drive there too, like we were, I was like asleep, bro. I I was like sitting in the corner of the van of the Sprinter, just like with my head on the rest, like eyes closed. Like I was still sweating and shit. Yeah, you were. Steiny was in the back coughing his lungs out. I look at Brad, I'm like, and he didn't, he started not to look too good. Yeah, I wasn't feeling good. Steve started getting kind of like. Yeah, looking none like of he was us kinda, were looking good. No man. one was looking good. Alex, the, Alex's, um, Steve's videographer was getting kind of sick, and he was like the one that was like, "Nah, I'm not gonna get sick." Yeah. And like an hour later, he's like, "Oh, my throat's kind of, my yeah, throat no, kind of hurts." We were all sick. The funny part though is we get there, and then um, there were some other guys who were there. We met. They were like wanted to get on the boat, and then they couldn't because too many people. But we get on this boat now. Imagine we're all just like we're all not feeling good. We're, we're all like, like shit. Yeah, I'm not feeling good. Jacob's feeling like shit. Jacob and Steiny are looking the worst. Me and Alex are like, fuck it, we're good. Steve's like, Steve, he's just he's a psychopath. The guy's like a tank. That was, guy could no, that guy remember, could go through anything. I remember dog. he kept like clearing his throat. Like, <clears throat> he's like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. no, dude, he's a tank. <laughs> he's a fucking tank. You can't kill that guy. Anyways, um, yeah, that guy's like fucking and he just nonstop. So, but we're dead set on getting this video. And the I didn't know, man. I was so distraught when they were like. I was like, how far are we driving out there? They're like, yeah, about 20 minutes or something. I was like, what? We have to fucking get on this. And I hate being on the boats because I get seasick. And the water is rocky yeah, as fuck. Yeah, it was fuck. so... Like, the, the waves, it was like so fucking... The waves are basically like, if you didn't hold on to that boat, when it hit a wave, you're dipping. You're leaving. Yeah. That shit's sending you to fucking space, literally. Like, you're getting knocked <laughs> off the fucking boat. So, um, we're now on this boat and we're like... Imagine all our heads are like, Ugh, uh, like yeah, looking every at every wave. It's like boom for twenty fucking minutes. Now I'm not gonna lie though. As soon as we jumped in the water, it's funny. Jacob was like, "Wait, who? Who was like? Was it Alex or Steiny? Who were like, Yo, Jacob, you gotta get in and get this shot with the GoPro.' And it was like so useless. Like, yeah, why did they have know. you do that? I don't know. We had, <laughs> dude. Okay, so like I'm filming from the boat. Like we finally make it to like the middle of the fucking sea where like the current apparently has. A ton of sharks flying through it, I guess. Right? Yeah, there was and tons we're of not, sharks. We're not like we're talking full on shark diving. We're not yeah. in a fucking cage. We don't have anything. So if a shark tries to bite us, our legs are getting torn. Yeah, off. they're throwing mulch like mutt, like you know dead fish in there to get the sharks to pull up, and they're like, yeah, just jump in. 
I swear to God, they're like, just yeah, like, jump yeah, in and good. like go across that line. You're good. And I remember the funniest thing. The girl goes, you guys all know how to breathe through snorkels. And we're like, we're like yeah, of dude. course. What the fuck? Any five-year-old could do that. Yeah, right? like, Duh. You just fucking breathe. And I'm not going to lie. The second I jumped <laughs> in the fucking water, I had this snorkel. I know how to snorkel. I've been snorkeling. But I don't know if because the, the mixture of like the first time I've ever been in water with like sharks, like really close to me. So the fear, like the little anxiousness anxious, yeah. and I jump in the water and I'm trying to breathe and I literally can't breathe enough through like this sucking. Like in I'm water. like, <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I have to get out the boat and I get out. And I remember I looked at him. I'm like, yo, that shit's hard to breathe through. And yeah. the lady's like, tell you fucking idiots. She like, even asked, she's like, we you. asked you if you know how to use snorkel gear. Like, yeah. yeah. So anyways, you calm down. But I just remember they, you were so fucked and you were like looking super bad. And they were like, get in there with the GoPro. Yeah. They were like, yo, get in there with the GoPro. We need a shot. And I was like, why doesn't Alex just go in there, bro? Like he's already been in there, you know? Like, yeah. They were like, fuck it. You have to go in, bro. Yeah. We I'm, also, we also part of us too, though. Like we knew. Like, we just wanted you, anyone, like, why would you not want to go try Yeah, it's like a too? once in a lifetime story to say that yeah. you swam with sharks with That no was gear. sick. Was I'll, like, ne I'll never not undo that one. That was dope. Well, so you I'm have, like, like, a fucking raging fever. You're I like, have, like, yeah, a raging fever. But sharks. it was like, dude, I already fucking doubled down. I sweated my entire ass off the entire night. Like, we drove two hours to get to this yeah, place. We then were we drove committed. the boat 30 minutes into the middle of the ocean. I'm like, bro, mine is fucking well. We were like, so committed. Like, I'm not going to not go in there. Like the commitment to that was like, we have to do this. And like I hopped in I there. dead ass, I swear to God, was not going to get in with sharks because I was like, no, I do yeah, not want to do this. Bitch, I was being a bitch. I did not want to get in with sharks. I literally only got in because I was like, I can't not get in. Like yeah. it's camera. I've never done this before. But like I was dead set the whole trip to being like, I'm just going to let these fucking idiots get in the water. 100%. And then like the last minute I was like, fuck, I got to do it. Because Murph was going to get in. I was like, Murph's yeah, fucking Murph's getting in. I got to get in. Yeah, he's got to get We all got to go in. <laughs> Straight up. Sorry, Murph. But I, I hopped in. The, I remember I hopped in the water. Sorry, Murph. Hopped in the water and like I was trying to breathe. And I sucked in so much That's ocean water. That's what I was water. doing. Yeah. I like literally swallowed ocean water. I was like. <gasps> like trying to yeah. film. And he's I'm, got like, the filming. GoPro? I'm like this. I'm like trying not to die. I'm like. He's got the GoPro. Like. My mouth isn't even on the mouthpiece. They're like, remember, put, the, put the mouthpiece on. I'm like, I remember looking at him. Like sucking out of a fucking straw. Yo, it was dude. so funny because I'm looking at him. He's got the GoPro like this. He's like dying in, like, in his face. And then they're also being like, get more vertical because they don't <laughs> want your legs to be straight down. They want you to be like this. And he's like, fuck. He's like, was getting all these cues trying to not and die. I just hopped out. And man. hold this fucking yeah. GoPro. It was hilarious. Yeah, that that was funny. amazing, man. That was one of the funniest moments, I got to say. Yeah, that was probably... Yeah, but that's when I knew Jacob was a soldier. I was like, "This guy is a soldier." That's that's when I knew. And when then I flew home, we flew home that same night, and I remember like I didn't sleep on the plane, and, and I came edited. home, and I didn't even sleep when I got home. I edited that video to get it done the next morning. Yeah, you slept in my car. Yeah, yeah, for a little I bit. Because I picked I picked you up, I picked yeah. you guys up, and you were in the fetal position, looking like shit. And then I went slept home. In the car. <laughs> went home. And I told him I could fucking... give you a ride, and he decided no, I'll drive. I went home. I drove. A, popped up. No, Jacob drove himself home. Yeah, I, I drove offered myself to give him home. A ride oh yeah, I remember home. that. You always do that though. Yeah. You like driving. I home. drive myself home and I pop my last emergency Adderall. That was an E Adderall. It was wow. a fucking thirty milligram Adderall straight to the dome skis, and I Holy finished shit. that video and I came in to work the next day. Yeah, I wow. still came to work the next day. Fuck, dude, that was a time, man. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly. What is this? The, the funny? What do you say? I said the following day he didn't though. He you went into work the next day and then uh, you got a day off. No. Well, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, shit. then we gave you a day off. Yeah, yeah that's because <laughs> I, I need I need a fucking day I off too. That shit, we, bro. Like, yeah, that was too much. What is the funniest thing that has happened yeah. to you while traveling or working with Brad? The funniest thing. Huh. That was it. That was yeah. funny as fuck. Are you kidding me? I mean, it wasn't. It was for me hilarious. It wasn't that funny because I was dying, but that was probably like the highlight of like everything that we did. I don't, I don't think there was anything that was funnier than that. Well, because like that was gnarly. It was like it was honestly the boat ride. That's when it started to climax. And <laughs> like, like how dog. fucking miserable Steiny was. He was just getting smacked in the fucking the, face. All water. the water. It's like imagine we're sitting though too, and all the water every time we hit a wave was just hitting him. <laughs> and we were just watching him get soaked. He's like blinking his eyes like this, like, huh? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it was like. That's exactly. What it, do we have any? Do we have any um, questions? Yeah, it's pull, we're going to pull up some questions, then we'll end this shit. Judge, reconsider. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is fucking, hold on. This is, this is Kim Kardashian has to fucking step in to save this guy's fucking life who was going to basically go to jail, who killed some people in a car crash because his brakes went out on his truck. It's not like this guy was like, I'm going to kill these four people. Listen, fucking terrible. But Kim Kardashian had to step in to save this guy's life. And now they're talking about they might reconsider this fucking massive sentence apparently because there's some sort of minimums on these 
like the way they sentence in was this Colorado? Yeah, it's in Colorado and it's like a whole shit show. Like it's like the brakes went out. It wasn't like an intentional, like I'm going to kill these people. Yeah. It was an accident, obviously. They gave but this the guy 110 they, years. Yeah, 110 years. Because like, of the minimum of like the people who died. But it's crazy that like gnarly. Kim Kardashian has to step. How the fuck like Kim Kardashian, the, the, the social media lady got to come in and be like, hey, you guys are not doing your job right. You should reconsider this. And then they reconsider it. What the fuck is going on, man? That doesn't really make any sense to me. I mean, it's like just reconsider it. It's clearly fucked. Yeah, 100%. I mean, listen, sorry to the people and the families of people, the four who died in the car. I don't think the guy got in the truck was like, I'm going to kill these four people today. And I also don't think they proved that. So it's like it wasn't like it was, was intentional. He, like, he wasn't like drunk or anything. No, no, well, he's a truck matter. driver. His, so he's an, he well, drives an 18 wheeler I mean, yeah. and yeah. he's a truck driver. And his brakes went and out. And so they're air brakes. So if you don't know how to properly do it, sometimes if you brake and you don't click the right thing, it could fuck it up where the brakes just don't work. And it's like, it's complicated as hell. My uncle's a truck driver. He was telling me how, oh, like, shit. the functionalities of uh, it. What does but he think about that? What does he think about it then? Are he thinks it's about? ridiculous because it was an accident. Like, it wasn't like this. I mean, accidents happen all the time on the street. Yeah. Of course, I feel terrible for, like, the four people that passed away in this. Of course. I'm sure the person who did it felt terrible. But the thing was, is they were doing their job. And unfortunately, for the functionalities of the truck, you inspect the truck before you drive it every time. So it's like you inspected the truck. Then something occurred while they're a malfunction like things that can shit happen, happen. Yeah. Things can happen. and then this ha occurred it's like and the then same thing if i was driving my car and my car brakes just went out for whatever fucking reason well I it's a little more complicated than your car but then but yeah this because is, like a truck like she said there's certain circumstances where that thing is like yeah it's just you, it's yeah. happening the, the fuck the thing about this is like i said beyond the fact that like you know why does kim kardashian i saw this have to yeah, say something random. to like get them to actually do something different for this guy's life is crazy also too i want to make this known Without fucking truck drivers, we wouldn't have dick. We would have nothing. I just want to make this really clear. If there were not truck drivers, you guys would not be eating a fucking single thing. You wouldn't be having all your fucking Amazon shit. You would not have shit if there wasn't for truck drivers. So put some fucking respect on their goddamn name. <laughs> well, like, nah, that shit pisses me off, No, though. for sure. But like another like fun fact is that truck drivers are protesting, which means that they are not shipping shit to Colorado. So if you go oh. there, it is like, oh shit, Colorado's like getting nothing. Fucking because it's like, Colorado, it's, boys. it's all of them in there and like, no one's doing anything about it. And that's why like some companies are just refusing to take there because they're, they're sentencing this guy forever. Yeah, for it's no crazy. good reason. And it's like, okay, I understand he did an error, whatever, like an accident happened. But 110 years, realistically, who the fuck? Yeah, like, I mean, like yeah. if that to put yourself in their shoes and that guy's shoes, I mean, realistically, I don't think that's pretty fair. It's terrible, regardless. The thing that trips me out the most is that just Kim Kardashian had to say yeah, like, something. Why did like, she what have the fuck to go is in there and do that? Like, what's going on with Isn't that? Isn't there like a thousand other people that? What does Kim Kardashian do? All of them? <laughs> Dude, I don't well, know. Kim Super Kardashian, she's, she's she's getting like a she's getting like a, a lawyer thing or something. She's like doing she's done this a lot. This kind of shit. It's pretty random. Like prison reform shit. But it's just interesting how it's like, oh, Kim Kardashian. Oh, okay, she steps in. Let's reconsider. It's like, all right, man. That's like before. Like, why not just why reconsider because it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, I feel that. Whatever. Anyways, any any other. So we're going to do audience questions. Oh, audience questions. Let's do it. Perfect. this was just a random current event topic that we decided to talk about. These like actual audience questions? Yes. Like oh. I get emails. So if you guys want to send in your questions about Boom. anything, go to askrawtalk at gmail.com. And we'll answer every podcast with a guest, without a guest, doesn't matter, at the end of the podcast. Uh, yeah, every time. I love this. This is the way I love to end the podcast. Okay. So this is from a person. They put their name in it. So, hey, pod crew, Gabe from Colorado here. Gabe what Colorado. advice do you have for someone who might be a little too hard on themselves, whether it be cutting an occasional workout short, not eating right, or even spending too much time on the phone? I find it hard um, to not feel like I'm cheating myself and I do not give everything I have 24-7 to every aspect of my life. I don't think anyone can do that, bro. Okay, yeah. We're being real. Yeah, number one, you cannot give everything you have to every aspect of your life every day. That is literally impossible. Number one, it's not even realistic. It's not realistic. So I'm not saying you need to like make your expectations more realistic because I also think that's fucking stupid. And a lot of people try and be like, oh, just do things because you know it's simple. Why don't you try this? I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is you cannot tear yourself down on like not doing enough. Like I, I, I trust me, man. I'm the kind of guy who's like, man, I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. But sometimes when you're like trying to force yourself into more, into more, into more in a way that's like 
unhealthy for you, you you basically start to just get less shit it's done like, it's overall. Like re- it's like basically reversing the progress that you've made. It's like actually working backwards when you're doing too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, like, that's the thing. It's like you can't like if you said I want to get better at everything. It's just not right. Like you have to start to put your focus. Okay. I want to be better at communicating and start working on that and focusing on that. And once you get good at that, then move on to the next. Yeah. Thing. And start like, to learn. And, and here's the thing too. This is life in reality. I want to get you guys to understand this straight up. My guy, listen, this is what's going to happen too. Maybe you get really good at one thing like communicating. And because you didn't spend enough time on building your business or, um, you know, I don't know, some sort of inner inner relationship with yourself like just communicating with other people is what i'm talking about the first part maybe you just got really good at that other things in your life do kind of uh wander a little bit i mean like maybe you get a little like you're you're not as good at it now because you shift your focus the point is this that is what life is number one like understand this first and foremost you're not going to be the best at literally everything all the time. It doesn't work that way. It's not life's more fluid than that. Like if you put your focus and your effort and your energy onto training, let's say, and then, you know, you're, you stop reading as much because you're, you're really, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, your th- focus is there. Don't you think like a good example would be like trying to water every fucking plant with all the water. Like you don't put all the water yeah, I mean, you, you, know, you also kill like, the fucking plant. Yeah, you're going to kill the plant. And it's just like, it's the same thing with progress Because plants, they need different types of water, different amounts yeah, each so day. Yeah, so you got to, you know, like sprinkle a little bit here and there and like find a, I think it's all about balance in life. Like, yeah, and it's all about you understanding. You can't give 110% into every fucking thing, bro. You're going to yeah. burn out. You're and it's understanding out. that. It's more so just understanding the fact that like, hey, if you want to get better at something, I'm not saying that something you were already good at, you're just going to completely fucking suck at now. But like, you have to put your focus there and understand that, okay, I might not be get, be getting better at these 10 other things that I also think are important at the same exact time that I'm focused on this. But I, yeah, I think it's like whatever you're going through in life. Like if you want to focus on like, pick like five things, dude. Like if you want to make more money, what are your, what are you going to do to make more money? If you want to be happier, like you should probably focus on like meditation or writing things down, like things that are work towards that. Like, yeah. Learning more like, about yourself. Like, like pick like three or three to five things. Don't pick 20. Yeah, because you, know? you, can you overwhelm yourself. Because you're gonna be like, "Fuck, I gotta do all twenty of these things." Fuck, 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 and yeah. then you're gonna forget. Yeah, that's the, that's yeah. it. That's the answer for sure. Balance. You okay. got another one. So another one is: I always hear everyone say, "Chase your dreams." I want to be a YouTuber. Should I pick up the camera and start chasing <laughs> my dreams, regardless of my parents or people around me, um, okay. and how they feel about okay. it? Okay. Yes. Dream- yes. Okay. Fuck everyone around you who feels about the things that you want to do. Number one, let me fucking make this really clear. Fuck everyone who has an opinion on something that they think is right for you okay you know in your heart what's right for you you know what's best for you you know what's going to make you the happiest stop looking for approval from other people in your life stop looking for like the direction that you should go in because someone else thinks it's a good idea listen to yourself listen to your heart i'm telling you your life will be so much better off i'm not saying listen Fuck your parents are bad people that's not what i'm saying but if you base your success or your direction in life off your parents it just doesn't make sense, right? Especially nowadays, there's so many different opportunities, so many different things in life that like, just straight up, your parents never had accessibility to certain things that, that we have and you have nowadays that like, you can't base your success or your progress or where you should go based on what someone else thinks. Like it's just, you're complicating something that like you need to learn at your own pace, how you feel, what really matters to you, all these things that are so, so much more important than just going like, oh, my dad thinks I should be a lawyer. I fucking hate this shit, but like, he thinks it's a really good idea and he's a lawyer and he makes money and he seems like he's happy, so I'm just gonna do it. Fuck that nonsense. Let's get rid of that shit. 2022, fuck that shit forever. It's bullshit. It's fucking dead and gone. Stop thinking like that. Don't do that to yourself, period. Fucking trust your gut, man. If you wanna do something, you feel like you wanna make fucking YouTube videos and go fucking make YouTube videos, bro. Drop out of college. Don't listen to anyone, dude. Because at the end of the day, like, all you really have is yourself, man. Listen to yourself. Yeah. You have you. You're in here, dude. Like, follow which, whatever the fuck you want to do. Like, yeah. you want to pick up the camera, go pick up the camera. And just do it. fucking just start. Do it. Yeah, don't, just start. Whenever people talk shit and they're like, oh, you can't do it. Just be like, dude, the only reason why they're saying is like, because they think they can't do it. It's yeah. like, dude, if That's you, a as big long thing, as you man. believe and you say that you can do it, then you're going to do it, man. It doesn't matter where you, whatever it is in life, man. Yeah, the, and it. the thing is, too, here's, here's the deal, guys. And I've talked about this before, but no matter what you do, 
And no matter how good you do it, no matter how much effort and energy and how much good that comes out of it and how much like you love it, you're still going to have shitheads who are like, fuck you, you suck. You're still going to have people who are like, that's stupid. That's not a good idea. You're still going to have people who are like, oh, why don't you do something else? That's but fuck all that shit. Like literally, you're never going to avoid that no matter what you do and no matter how good you are at it. I promise you this. That will never fucking change. You'll never avoid negative from people. So stop listening to it, period. Fuck those motherfuckers. They can suck your dick. Straight up. Suck my dick too, bitch. I know you see this. Fuck you. Anyways, um, I got a little aggressive. That's the trend. Anyways, um, let us know if you want a pod. Oh, this is. <laughs> uh, wait. Just read this shit. So One do more. you want another question or no? Because that was two questions. That was such a good question. Is this, two is this good a questions. good question? Yeah, I think it's a good one. I fuck it. Run that shit. Okay. So she says, hi, Bradley. I met you in 2018. She says, she says. Wow. Yeah. Hi, Bradley. This is a a woman. Yes. Who's a fan. Yes. Okay. Rare. Very rare. Go ahead. Hi, Bradley. I met you in 2018. Okay. And one thing that has always stuck with me is how positive you are. My question is, how do you always stay positive and what do you do on your bad days to help that? That is one thing I struggle with, and I really value your thoughts and opinions. Thank you. Okay. Um, first and foremost, thank you for being a listener. Secondly, um, <clears throat> it's all about perspective, right? I grew up without my father, and I again, I'm not trying to make it sound like a broken record, but that was one of the shittiest things that could have ever happened to me, I think, as a human being. And the way that I, it happened, and my father hung himself, and me trying to understand all these things, like, didn't make sense to me. And completely like rocked me to the core and it still affects me in my life now when I have conversations about it, I still cry, right? Perspective in that allows me to see that everything else is just not that fucking serious. Like it allows me to be like, uh, ah, I, I, I either did my best, it didn't work, I did my best, you know, I wish it was different, but it's not as bad as other things that I've been through. So like we were talking about this earlier, going through that negative part in my life, the most negative thing ever has given me perspective for the rest of my life to make me realize like, well, this is really not that difficult. Like, because I've already gone through something that was fucking terrible and racked my brain for fucking 20 plus years of my life every single fucking day. And it just allowed me to be like, nothing else is that fucking serious. So I'm not saying like, hey, you know, you have to have a father that kills himself when you're six years old and have to deal with it to understand or to move forward. I'm saying that like, Number one, you're not going to avoid everything negative in life. You're not going to be the best always. It's accepting and giving yourself that perspective that like life is fluid. Life is about growing. Life is about learning. Life is about fucking up. Life is about succeeding. Life is about losing after you succeed. Life is about never always being on top. It's about the journey. And, And if you could focus on the fact that me going through these moments in my life, no matter what it is, that is your life. And that is the, that's like, cause here's the deal. When you're gone, it's all, it's all gone. None of it. It's just gone. Right? Like, why would you, why would you like try to avoid pain completely? Right? Why would you try to avoid heartache completely? Why would you try to protect yourself so much that like you can't find yourself in a a new relationship because your other relationship didn't work and you're, you're holding on to these things. Like you have to just fucking live life and be like, yo, that's what it's about. It's, 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 it's like accepting like the positive and the negatives, everything that comes. With everything. It. It, this is life. Not like every, you can't. Not, everyone, not everyone's going to have a perfect day. Like, like I think she asked like, how do you stay so positive all the time? Yeah. Like, when you have a bad day, it's like, it comes and goes, it comes in waves. It's yeah. not, it's not anything in life pro- progression and anything that you do. It's like, it's never linear all the way. It's Fuck always no, like man. a fucking it's roller. All, and I said, dude. it's the same podcast we had with Fousey. It's all about the journey. It's all about the moments you take along the way. And like understanding that, even the shitty ones, there's still something good in that shit. You maybe don't get it right away, you get it in the future. But it's like just letting it be. Letting it be, trying to be happy, trying to spread love, trying to spread positivity. I'm not always happy. I'm not always positive. But I try my best. And I try to remind myself when I feel shitty in those moments where I'm like, you know, the, we were talking about earlier that inner dialogue where I'm like, man, fuck, like today I fucking suck. I can't think of shit. I try to stop myself in those moments and be like, hold on a second. Like give yourself some credit. And then I noticed just even changing those tiny things and trying to give myself a little bit more credit, my creativity starts to feel a little bit better. My, my, my productivity starts to feel a little better. So being hard on yourself is one of the shittiest things you could do, man. Yeah. Just straight up. Just take it day by day. Do the best that you can every single day. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I think that's it. I mean, unless you want another question or we could close it out. No, let's save it. Let's save it. That was awesome. Um, subscribe to the podcast. Turn the post notifications on on YouTube. Make sure you guys drop a review on iTunes. We're on iTunes as well. Just audio only. Um, if you guys want to see another Jacob, uh, another Jacob, another podcast with me and Jacob, 
um let me know drop you comment know down below comment down below because yeah i just want to i want to make this comfortable like obviously jess is not gone like jess wasn't on this one but i want to i want to have like more people in in my circle do this with us i want to have more people involved in general so you guys see like the whole the whole spectrum of everything that we do here so i love you guys i appreciate all the fucking support um <clears throat> shout out jacob by the way like without jacob the channels would not be what it is today um for sure and, dude. and everything even just the content like you know having having like a second person to be like yo what do you think about this what do you think about that as far as like captions and just creativity wise that's essential so find you guys at jacob all right i love you guys subscribe to the fucking channel i'm out of here happy Thanks, new yeah, year yeah happy new year to you happy fuckers new year. that was a great podcast dope Fuck, my ass is gonna fall off. Holy fuck. My leg hurts. I'm gonna go jerk off. Go wow. Subscribe to the channel. I'm out of here, bitch.